What's going on everybody? This is Bunny Muffins. Today, we're gonna be doing an unranked all the way to diamond video. We're gonna be doing one game at every rank. So I'm gonna play the first one in iron, but then after that, I'm gonna be reviewing games that other people have sent me. And through that, we are going to learn exactly what the differences in each rating is. And hopefully uh, you'll all be able to learn from that. I did this a lot in my previous sets. So I wanna continue on the series right now. But let's get on into the first game, which is Iron. So we start off in the Dreaming Pool. I'm gonna be using the Legend Pengu because they say it is great for beginners. That's what Riot Games says, at least. We get a bunch of unit drops at the start. I'm gonna pick up this cloak from the neutral rounds. And in Iron, you pretty much just uh, don't have to do too much. You just kinda of have to know the basics to get out of Iron. Uh, that's stuff like just making decent boards, leveling up at the right time. Like notice here, we just get a two-star Malzahar right away. Some people might not play it if they uh, don't know how to play any of the Malzahar comps, but uh, hopefully, like again, we'll just be able to climb right out of this and also show the common mistakes that people are making at each rating. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up. We get the Malzahar two-star. And then what I can do is I could look at the left-hand side See that Malzahar is a sorcerer and a void, so I could just go ahead and pick up the Orianna because she's also a sorcerer and get the sorcerer buff just like that. Uh, it's just like a small improvement to my team. And for all the user submitted videos, because this is a popular series that I've been doing, I want to actually review all user submitted games in my future videos. So if you are in iron, silver, bronze, uh, gold, or platinum or diamond, go ahead and upload your videos of the games that you play, like record them and then send them to me on this Google form, which I'll leave in the description below for you all to click on and in like the pinned comment. So I'll definitely be going through all those games uh, later on. So in Iron, it's good to look at every augment, but because we're just starting out, I'm only gonna pick the Pengu augments because I'm gonna show you that like playing good TFT matters more than everything. And if you get really comfortable with one play style, that's gonna help you a ton later on. But if I was playing seriously, I'd probably take long distance pals here and try to win streak, but we're gonna take Metabolic Accelerator instead, just because Riot Games said that this is good for beginners to do, and Pengu's a great beginner legend. So uh, we're gonna probably go ahead and level up here because we wanna go on a win streak. So I'm gonna sell this Aurelia, sell this Gen, level up, put in Renekton for Bruiser. You always wanna play around your upgraded units. So we have an upgraded Malzahar and an upgraded Cho'Gath now. So for Malzahar, Complement him with the Orianna Cho'Gath, complement him with the Renekton for Bruiser. We're facing off against a Vi too, so this fight is actually a little harder than it probably should be, but we do get the win after that, so that's all fine and dandy there. Uh, also pay attention to the portal. You notice that this is the Dreaming Pool, so at the start of each stage, gain a champion that fits your team. Stage is at the top. Uh, right now we're in stage two, round two, so the start of the stage would have been last round, so we got this Swain for free before. So we could actually put Swain in if we want. But we're going to get a new champion from the Dreaming Pool in stage 3-1 after this round up here. So always look out for that and always play around whatever portals are kind of there because that's going to be a big determining factor on like who gets the climb and who doesn't. And right now, like this Dreaming Pool, it's pretty hard to use. I'd say it's a bit more advanced than most people think. So I'm not gonna get too deep into those mechanics, just know that it's something to kind of pay attention to later on. Uh, so we're facing off against a Demacia player. You could look at other people's augments by right-clicking on the side here. And by the way, in case you are like higher than iron, you're still gonna learn a lot from watching this game just by seeing how I play and me just hopefully explaining my whole thought process every single round. Uh, but yeah, you could check out other people's augments that they take uh, by right-clicking this here in case you don't recognize all the icons yet. Uh, but yeah, Demacia Crest, so we probably have one Demacia player already, so we don't want to kind of contest that if we can help it, but that might not always be the case. All right, next round, hmm. I kind of want to play a third Void unit, because we look on the left here, we have two out of three Voids, but we just don't have the other unit yet. I'm not going to roll for it, because rolling in the early game is not ideal, because you just don't lose that much life in the early game, so you don't have to have the strongest board you possibly can ever field. But I do kind of want to play it. Also, our items are kind of scuffed. We could build Zeke's Herald, Bloodthirster, or Zephyr, none of which I really want right now. But hopefully on the carousel where we can get an extra item, we get something that we could actually build because, man, these items are, are kind of rough. 
So on the first augment round, generally in stage two, I like to say like, oh, you should choose whether you want to win streak or lose streak. And if you don't have good items, it's gonna be very difficult to win streak in. So right now we're playing in iron. So generally in iron, that's the worst rank. Players are not gonna be as good. I should be destroying these players, right? But you can't force a win streak if it's not given to you, uh, even if you are in a lower rating. Like sometimes you could do it still, but like most cases, probably not gonna happen. And if you don't have items, very impossible to do. Not impossible, it's just more difficult. But obviously every game has its own little like differences here and there. Like some games you get really lucky in, some games you get really unlucky in. You kind of just have to balance the two together. Right, so I guess I'll go for maybe a, another belt. Actually, hmm, I wanna build an item right now, but actually I'm gonna go for the bow. I think the bow is a good investment into the late game because a lot of team comps, they need damage items from the bow, so just taking it now, we'll probably fix our items on Krugs and go on with that. And because we have this metabolic accelerator augment, your tactician moves faster and heals two health after a PvP round. We're going to have a lot of health, and so we could kind of sacrifice our early game to get like a perfect late game, ideally. So I'm not even going to level up. I'm going to sell this Sona, sell this Jin, and we're just going to kind of sit on this and wait till the game kind of plays itself out. Normally I would say build an item when you have four or more components and we have that situation right now, but because I'm playing more for the late game, I'm gonna break that rule right now. I know I shouldn't do it, you shouldn't be a rule breaker, but none of these items are really that great and I'm, I don't wanna be on a win streak because I have this metabolic accelerator augment. But it's not to say that you should never win streak with this, but it's just more difficult to because you're essentially down an augment, but uh, every game obviously is going to be a little different. So we end up losing this round here. We're two and two so far, but that's okay. We're still pretty high health because of metabolic. And in this next round, okay, we get another Oriana. That's going to be good. We get Oriana two star. We have this Velkaz. That's going to be nice as well because now we get Void. We could actually do Void and Sorcerer. So would you rather have the two star Oriana or the Renekton for Bruiser? Honestly, in this situation, they're pretty comparable. I think the Oriana is going to be a little bit better. Uh, yeah, we want to play it around Cho'Gath, but another thing you need to keep in mind is having a balance between frontline and backline units. And right now we have two frontline units in the Cho'Gath and the little Void thing. And then we have two backline units in the Vel'Koz and Malzahar. Oriana is kind of in between. You can kind of place her up in the front so that she shields herself, and then hopefully the shield does like a little bit of damage. But... It's all good here. Wow, this opponent is very powerful. Two-star Karma, two-star Soraka, two-star Aurelia. How is this team even possible at this point in the game? That is a very powerful team, but I guess it's, <laughs> I guess it's fine. We end up losing that round, and then we're going to be two and three in Sage 2. So moving into the neutral rounds, we do have to kind of prepare our thing for the next round. So we might just go Sorcerers this game. Why not? Uh, so whatever unit or whatever traits at the top, that's going to be what you're going to get from the Dreaming Pool. And I think I'll just go for Sorcerers, mm, just because we have a bunch of the units already. So we're probably going to get a Vel'Koz there. We're going to get a 3-cost unit. It's based on whatever stage you're in. So if you're in Stage 2, you get a 2-cost unit. Stage 3, 3-cost unit. Stage 4, 4-cost. Four and 5 and beyond, you get a Legendary every time. So um, I'm probably going to get a Taric or a Vel'Koz here, which is good to know to kind of try to play around. Oh, Toma Traits. I guess we just rip the Tome and see what we get after that. Uh, I'll just pop it now, why not? There are ways to like optimize your Toma Traits usage, but that's more advanced. I don't think in Iron you need to kind of know that, so uh, we'll just pop it right now and then hopefully play some of these comps. So I'm actually going to go for a Bastion Emblem, because I think with Sorcerers that's going to be kind of the easiest thing to kind of use, because ideally you get Kassadin, and then with that you could kind of play Bastions around that. So we have a bunch of items here. Probably gonna build, uh, Warmogs might be decent. We'll just slam that, because we have to build items here. We have so many components. You always want a mix of tank and damage items. And then we could probably build Static Shiv or Spear of Shojin. I'm thinking Static Shiv, because we have a lot of bows. We have two bows, so we want to use them as much as possible. Maybe we just build Giant Slayer. I'll kind of wait to see what happens later on, because Giant Slayer, it's good, but it's more of a late game item, because it's really good against high health targets. And there aren't that many high health targets in the early game, so you don't really get much value from slamming a Giant Slayer, 
even though almost anyone can use it on any team. Uh, just because we're in the early game, it's not going to get much value from slamming. And the whole point of slamming items is to get more powerful. And if an item, frankly, doesn't do that much, not worth the slam, at least not yet. All right, so there are other augments here. You probably want to take Think Fast if you're playing like super serious. If I was on my main account, I'd definitely take the Think Fast. But I want to just do Pengu items, so we're just going to grab those over here. We grab these, we get Redemption, and <laughs> speak of the devil, we get the Giant Slayer. All right, Redemption's good. We'll throw that on our tank. Giant Slayer, let's see who's doing the most damage right now. It is Malzahar, so... Ah, do I want it on Velkaz or Malzahar? If you want to win now, Malzahar, but if you want to save the Malzahar, you put it on your Velkaz. So I think I'm going to actually put it on my Velkaz for now, and then that way we won't have to get a replacement Malzahar. I know I see him here, but I, I want to get him to two-star, and he could probably hold on to the Static Shiv the whole game. Let's drop in Swain. We get four Sorcerer now, and yeah, this is pretty much what our team's going to be like for now, at least. Doesn't look too bad. It's not the best team in the world, but... It's the team I got, you know? <laughs> so we're going to be able to get six sorcerers into the later part of this game. So hopefully that should be good enough for us. So we'll play around Tarek and Lux. And then the comp you actually want has like Kasten in it so that you get Bastion with the Tarek. But maybe we could even play like four Bastion. Or maybe we don't even play Void at all. That could be interesting too. So I'm going to sell these two for interest. Cho'Gath I'm not going to keep anyway, so I don't need a replacement Cho'Gath. Hmm, what do I want on this carousel? Probably tier for Spirit Shojin. It really enables Velkaz or Lux to cast like a ton. Um, we'll just leave them in the middle for now. So another thing that's very important to do in TFT is scouting. So you could scout by clicking on everyone's player portraits just to kind of see what everyone's going. So one player is going Void. It looks like they're contesting us, but since they're going Void, because I see they have Void Crown, they're not going to go for all the Sorcerers. Uh, but it seems like we're pretty safe and in the clear. I don't think anyone else is going Sorcerers this game. So we get to have an uncontested game, which is really good. Because that means uh, no one's taking the same units as us. And if you're playing any card game, TFT is essentially a card game, right? If everyone's like taking the cards that you want, there are less of them available in the deck, right? But since no one else is kind of doing that like super directly, like yeah, there are people indirectly contesting us, such as the Void player taking the Bell Causes like the Malzahars, but um, as far as like the other sorcerers are concerned, they should be relatively easy to hit. But we'll see if that actually holds up to be true later on in the game when we do our roll down. Because sometimes, even though something has a higher chance of happening, doesn't mean it always happens. A lot of people complain to me. They're like, hey, I scouted, I was uncontested, but I still didn't hit. What did I do wrong? It could be nothing, but in a lot of other cases, it could be the case of, um, not playing what you actually have in your shop. So even if something's uncontested or even if something's contested, you can only play what shows up in your shop, right? So that takes priority over everything. Hopefully we could get the Tarek here. He has a tier, so we would... Oh, no, we were so close. I guess we'll settle on a sword. Maybe we could build, like, a Giant Slayer and then save this next sword for another Spear of Shojin or, like, the Spear of Shojin that we actually need. We'll do that for now. I'll just build the second Giant Slayer on... Velkaz. Um, I know I said we wouldn't slam it before, but whenever you have two swords or two of the same component, you kind of want to use that component ASAP because uh, if the double item doesn't work, like the Deathblade, we could have built Deathblade. If that doesn't fit your team comp, you kind of just have to use those like items as kind of like a worst case scenario. So Giant Slayer is probably one of the worst case scenarios for sword for us. And because we got another copy of Sword, we just kind of have to settle for that. Another option could have been going for a Negatron Cloak, building a Dragon Claw. But I don't know how much ability power is in the game right now, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that quite yet. We're facing off against a Freljord Lissandra player with Piltover. I'll be honest, I haven't quite seen that before, but you know, we discover new things every day. And if you don't experiment, you'll never find out. So in Iron, you're, you'll find that a lot of people don't play what's called the meta, which is like just the best strategy for like, or like the best comps for a certain patch. And it's a good and bad thing. Sometimes it's bad because they hit ridiculous combos that only work one in a million times. But in most cases, it's good because they have to hit it one in a million times. And it's just one game of TFT that we're kind of playing right now. By the way, I'm gonna level up here. Whenever you could keep above like 30 gold, you should probably just level up, even if you can't put in like that great of units. Uh, you'll learn the ins and outs on like when the exceptions are, but generally if you could level up without 
uh, losing more than 30 gold or keeping at least 30 gold in your bank, you probably, probably should do it most of the time, like 95% of the time. Uh, we're facing off against an Aphelios player. Okay. I still have to work around this Bastion a little bit. I have to find other Bastions. We just have Bastion Crest without, without any Bastions. Maybe we could get a... It's really just Taric that we're waiting for. Shen could be cool too. So we could do like Kassadin, Taric, and Shen with the Bastion emblem for four Bastion. That could be pretty good for our team's tank line. And I think we will have slots for that. I do want six Sork though. We're almost there, but... We have some other stuff on our team that we could kind of replace until then. Or we just reach higher levels to fit in more units. Well, we'll see. By the way, I love this Augment Metabolic Accelerator because he just runs so fast. And with the little legend I have, the Dango like rolls around, which is really, really funny to me. Right, so we get the Lux. That's really good. That's from the Dreaming Pool, as we talked about earlier. Hmm, we have a Spatula. So I'll probably wait to build a Sorcerer Spat. That'd be really powerful for us. We have this lesser duplicator. Do we just duplicate this Dalkaz? It can't be that bad, right? It can't be. Mm, maybe I wait on it. Ah, This is those times. I guess we're on a win streak. If we're on a win streak, we could build it. Sure. We'll just do that. I was thinking about putting the Giant Slayers onto my Lux or potentially re-rolling for Velkos 3 star. But since there's another Void player in the game, we probably won't get Velkos 3 that easily. So... Just use a duplicator on it. Hopefully it wins us some rounds, or even if you don't win the round, hopefully it saves us some HP because we could kill maybe one more unit. Uh, I love how this is like one of those few examples where I don't actually kill a unit after upgrading my team. But you know, it is what it is. Sometimes that kind of happens. Let's wait for this next augment though. We could scout around a little bit in this downtime. It seems like someone's going Lissandra reroll, which is very interesting, but we'll just take final grab bag. Just take the default uh, legend augments, and we get hmm, no sorcerer spatula or sorcerer emblem. That's really, really unlucky. We'll get it later, right? Okay, well, we better, because <laughs> that's kind of what we're playing around. All right, I think we build the jeweled gauntlet on this Velkaz and then wait a little on these other items. This is going to be a little suspicious of a game. So, could we level up? 52 to level up? Yeah, we probably should. We'll just play a random... I guess, Garen. We probably should roll a bit. Okay, Cassante's good. Swain is good. And then we'll put in you over you. So now we finally have Bastion again. Uh, we have an item remover, so we don't need to get this Velkaz. So we could just leave our team like this. I should probably take out Renekton for something else. But we really need Taric. We really need Kassadin, but we're 87 life, so we're not in like that much of a hurry. A mistake I see often is people roll down to zero just because a leveling guide tells them to. And they do it when they're at like 90 health or something, or 80 health. Not that it's bad to roll down at certain stages, but you also have to keep in mind what your health levels are at. And if your health levels are high, you're not in a rush to roll down, you know? It's like, it's like people wanting to be a billionaire by the time they're like 40 or something like that. Like... Do you really need it that quickly, like that much money? Probably not. And if there is some way, okay, there's no way to do it. But like, if there was some way to guarantee that you could be a billionaire when you're like 60, let's just say that existed. There, there isn't for like 99.9999999% of people, but like, you don't need to rush it and hit it at 40, you know? Just because like, you're Warren Buffett or something like that, like, he got to be a billionaire much later than let's say like Mark Zuckerberg, but he's still chilling because like, he took his time and he was patient. And obviously they're born in different years, but that's besides the point. You guys get what I'm trying to say. Like just, you don't have to rush things if you're high health. All right, let's go into the carousel round. I want the tier for the spatula to build sorcerer emblem. Ooh, there's another spatula there. So we could go for the spatula, the tier, or the Ari, just because Ari's a five cost unit. So, uh, or a five cost sorcerer. So that would be really good for what we want to do, but we'll just go for the tier for now. Please don't take it, thank you, because that's going to be the best use of the spatula emblem, and it's not going to be built for anything else that we're doing, because we're just really just tunneling the sorcerer build. So I'm going to play this Jarvan over the Renekton, and let's see what sorcerer does. It gives them AP, and then when someone dies, they deal a percent of their max health to like a different enemy, so I'll just build this Screw it, I'll build it on the Jarvan. 
And we get Demacia, that's pretty cool too. Okay, we wanna add Swain back in. So I think I'm gonna take out Void, sell this, and then put the tank items, I guess on, on Cassante for now. Cassante is pretty powerful when he's like itemized up, especially at this point in the game. So if you just put a bunch of tank items on him, he can often kill a lot of like those really big boy tanks that people kind of have at this stage in the game. Uh, but we'll wait on our other items. We're facing off against the Void player. Void's really strong in the mid game, so this is actually a pretty troublesome time for us. Luckily, this player does not have the Baron Nasher yet, but they do have a Kaisa 2 star. Luckily, no items on the Kaisa 2 star, so we actually end up winning. So, two stars are a little deceptive. On paper, his team is much stronger than ours. However, his main carry, Kaisa, who is upgraded, doesn't have items. That's why we put the items on Velkaz over our Lux. A lot of mistakes I see, or a lot of common mistakes I see people doing, even in like Diamond, even in Masters, not necessarily even in Iron, is that they sell the three cost carry in Velkaz to put items on their four cost carry, even though the four cost carry is unupgraded. So they would just sell this Velkaz and then put all the items on Lux. And that would be a pretty big mistake because three cost carries are very useful to kind of help you guide your mid game into the late game. You don't always have to play the super late game comp in stage four just because other people got lucky. So what ends up happening is that you scout some of the other players in the game and you're like, holy cow, how did they hit their full team early on in stage four? And the answer is just luck. And just because someone got lucky doesn't mean you need the same exact thing. Like just because someone wins the lottery doesn't mean you're gonna go out the next day and buy like a hundred lottery tickets. Like that's just not how life works out, you know? Um, so just be patient and eventually your team will come. So just play the good mid game stuff and use those to the fullest extent until later on when you could actually swap everything out for all the goodies. So we are at level eight. Oh, I need to do, okay. I made a mistake here. So notice how we have dreaming pool. At the start of each stage, gain a champion that fits your team. Right now that's gonna give us Ari because we have sorcerer active. However, we probably could have played or taken out all the traits to play Bastion and that would have given us Cassante in the next round, which would have given us a Cassante two star. So that's a small mistake I made there. Not small, that's actually a pretty big mistake we made there, but hopefully we can recover it later. So Hextech Gunblade for sure on the Lux. It's really the only item it could build. And I guess another Giant Slayer. I guess we're slaying Giants today. And then we could build the Zephyr on someone. So what I like to do for building Zephyr is I buy a random unit in the shop, build the Zephyr on them, sell the unit, and that way I could put it on whoever I want. Probably gonna go on like Malzahar maybe, maybe get someone in the corner or get their main tank. Okay, we'll put it on Garen for now. We'll get the Katarina. Good enough for me, but this player is super strong. Holy cow. They did use all their gold, but again, you might be wondering like, it's stage five one, why are you not using your gold to like roll down? The answer to that is we're again, still very high health. We're at 82 health. So we're not in a rush to roll down. And I feel like a lot of players, again, they're just looking at leveling guides and just following them, which is great. It's gonna get you pretty far. But if you wanna push it to the next level, you have to know uh, when things are actually good to do and when they're not. All right, let's replace this Oriana. We don't need her anymore. And then we wanna get this cast in, in somehow. I think we could just level up here. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, that way we get Void and another Bastion, but we need Taric. So I'll sell this Aatrox, sell this Velkaz, and then we'll wait maybe like a round or two. I just want to put the Kassadin in because like getting Void more frontline probably going to be pretty like decently half useful, you know? Uh, let's see who we're facing. Uh-oh, two-star Aphelios, two-star Urga, two-star Taric. Oh, so this player has all our Tarics. Interesting. It's okay. Well, we'll get Taric eventually. I wonder who's actually doing the most damage on our team. Did we actually win this round? Our team seems like so weak. Again, it's like the whole three cost carry. It's like, it's much more stable than people think. We only lost by one unit, so it's like not even that bad of a loss. And considering we have metabolic accelerator, we're gonna be like just healing back up over, over time. But maybe we roll now. We kind of want Lux to, I'll roll down to maybe 10 every single turn. Uh, could use this. Don't really use any of these. I could use Shen later. There's another Lux. I said I'd roll to 10, but I rolled past it. That is kind of my mistake. Do we have room to fit in the Demacians? I think I want to take out Demacia 
and play Bastions instead. And then we probably don't need to play Swain either. Swain could be replaced by Tarek, I, I believe. So I'll sell the Tarek, or sell the Swain and sell the Garen and the Belkaz. And then hopefully we'll be able to hit everything else. You don't have to sell them because I didn't actually make interest from it, but sometimes I just like to sell everything just so I don't get confused on my bench. It's like theoretically suboptimal, but in practice it works out pretty well because getting confused in TFT makes it so that you take much longer on your turns. And that's not always a good thing. Well, it's never a good thing, and it's kind of why I did what I did, so I'm, I'm less confused later on. Uh, what do we want on this carousel? Look, Looking at our team, maybe another tank item for Cassante. Definitely tank item. We have... Like one, two, three, four, five, six damage items. So tank item or utility item would be pretty good. Unfortunately, there are no tank items apart from the ZZ Rot portal, and that got taken. Maybe we go for uh, another giant slayer. All right. That's a lot of giant slayers. You don't want this, but it's it's what we got. Unlucky. All right, we'll roll to ten again. So one roll. Oh, we got Tarek. Okay, take out Swain, sell this, and then we could put in Shen. And then we have an extra slot, so I guess we could play Heimerdinger. All right, sure. We won't run these guys. Put this on... I have, like, too many Bastions in. That's, that's completely my bad. <laughs> Oh, jeez. All right, just throw this on you. I, I don't know. I completely messed up there, and that's exactly what I mean. I'm, like, trying to commentate the game, right? So I'm not, like, fully focused on the actual game, and that ends up confusing me and costs me, like, some traits. Maybe I could have kept the Demacians in uh, with that in mind, but unlucky, it happens. We actually, actually, luckily, we still won this round. We beat a Karma 3-star with this weak team. Again, it's the Velkos pulling a lot of weight right now. Hmm. We're going into the PvE round. I'll sell this. I don't think we actually need that. Uh, do we want Repair-O-Matic? We have a lot of good front lines, so you don't actually want Repair-O-Matic. We probably want the one that burns people. Repair-O-Matic is really good in comps that lack front line, but since we're running four Bastion, we have a lot of front lines, so we don't actually want to play Repair-O-Matic, which means I should put the turret in the back row. But we'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that in the next round. I just... Another brain fart. It's okay. This person has a lot of upgrades. Two-star Heimerdinger, three-star Lissandra, three-star Jinx. It's actually very scary. We're at 44 life now. Oh, we already top four. I didn't even realize that. So we already, like, pretty much won the game. Won as in, like, got top four. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm so silly. I forgot to set up the Bastion again. I just... A lot of things you can work on in the game. Pretty much there's always something to improve on. But we get Lux too. I mean, getting the Ari isn't bad, but getting a guaranteed Cassante is really good. And there's the Mechano Swarm that we wanted. We'll upgrade that. We'll roll down a bit. Don't really want Goldenator. Ooh, we get the Cassante anyways. Never punish. Two Rises. That could be useful later. Shrink Module, no. We do want the Shen. Oh, and then the last Mechano thing. Uh, probably play Rise over the Kassadin, I think. I don't think we need to run the Voids. And then we'll just get Swarm. Pop this. Probably get a tank item. Uh, let's put the Bastion Emblem on someone. We'll just drop it on, on you, I guess. Maybe Quicksilver Cassante might be good. It's, it's two-star Cassante. Now let's get a pure tank item. We'll grab this, drop it on Cassante. Where, where is he? And then Cassante's going to be, like, very tanky now. Uh, maybe it didn't show in this game, but the next round probably should. Uh, do we want the Belveth? Probably don't have room for it. Okay, let's roll down a bit more. I want the last burn one. Oh, we got Rise too. We'll buy that. Level 9, you just hit a lot of stuff, so pretty nice. Unfortunately, no items for the Rise. Our, our team comp's really weird, because you really want mana items whenever you play Sorcerer. Mana items as in, did I just sell Shen when he was... Oh my god. I thought I kept casting over Shen. Lots of mistakes this game, but in the uh, next games where I'm going to be reviewing other people's games, and it's not going to be live, this is like live, um, definitely going to be a lot better analysis in my opinion. But I figure for the Iron game, it's better to like walk through just like a random game that I play on the uh, on one of my accounts, just so people can see like what's actually kind of going on during the game. But for the other ones, uh, when I review other people's games, I'll just uh, do that over a recording.
but we get a huge loss here. We're down to 20. We might get third, though, which is still pretty good. Um, considering we were forcing a comp, considering we didn't really pick any augments, I'd say that's pretty good. repair o -matic, no. We really want the last one. <sighs> we can't get triple burn, really? We're better than that, right? We, <sighs> we should be able to get it. We still don't get it. That's actually incredible. Whatever. Um, I'll leave this turret over here. Maybe we want the static ship close to our Lux and Velkaz. That way they deal a little bit more damage. I need to check Ryze's Realm Warp. So they gain attack speed when he throws this thing out, and they also heal, or enemies get stunned. That's pretty decent. Not the best for my team, but kind of better than nothing. Attack speed's good for, like, helping your team gain mana, and that's definitely a department we are kind of lacking in right now. Okay, Cassante is dying, but Heimer gets a great AoE stun there. Good job. If we had maybe triple burn, maybe we win this fight. Oh, we did win, even without it. That's very good. On this carousel round, we probably want tank items or like a rise item or a utility. Uh, maybe tank item. I'll go for this Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw was a mistake because they're playing attack damage comps. Uh, probably Zephyr then. Zephyr or Warmogs. Warmogs on maybe like the Shen or Taric wouldn't have been too bad. But it's all good. It's, it matters, but not really. We'll do a roll here. Goldenator again? Come on, you gotta give me the other one. Ah, oh, I feel actually so cheated right now. We get the RE2 star. I guess that's good enough, you know. I'll drop this on, I don't know, you. Okay, I think we should item remove the Velkaz. Drop all these on RE, because... Hopefully Ari does something, because we're playing Sorcerer, she's the legendary Sorcerer. Surely that means she actually does something, right? Maybe, maybe not. I feel like Ari needs Ionia to really pop off. Maybe we could add in Ionia instead of this last Heimerdinger. Who's a good Ionian to play? Maybe Karma to get Invoker? Oh, we already have Invoker with Ryze. Maybe Yasuo, just because he's a CC unit? That could be done. I don't know if that's worth it. We'd have to take a Heimerdinger, and we invested a bunch into Heimerdinger already. I mean, if we get Yasuo 2-star, I'll play it. Yasuo 2-star with Bastion can't be that bad. Oh, we got second place. Very nice. I don't think we could beat this last person, though. We did get the Mechano Swarm. It's really nice. He's going for Urgot 3-star, so we might need to buy Urgots to deny the Urgot 3-star. That's a little anti-fun. If you're trying to win, sometimes you gotta be a little anti-fun. Not too much, just like a little anti-fun. It's not going to be, uh, no one, no one can sue me for that, right? All right, out of the Sorcerers, which is the best? I probably want to replace Malzahar with a Swain 2-star, but I'm probably not going to end up getting that this game. It's hard to find 2-cost units once you're level 9. Right, but this Cassante should be, should be popping off. Yeah, we get a nice CC on the Urgot and the Aphelios. Unlucky that we can't get this Urgot to get knocked out, but we do actually destroy this round. I don't even know how. Ari is actually just... Popping off, holy cow. D didn't I say Giant Slayer's extremely good later on? Like, in the fights in stage 4 and 5, we're actually, like, losing a lot of them or, like, not destroying them. I think it's because of the Giant Slayer's not being, like, that active on most of the enemy units. But, like, it works on the Sejuani, works on the Urgot, works on the Shen. So those are, like, a lot of beefy units that we just get a lot of bonus damage against. I'm guessing that's where most of our difference is from. So it's, like... Our team, like, scaled as the game went on, just because of our our items. All right, we get this. I'll pop this. Ooh, Archangel would have been good on Ari. We don't get the choice for that. Do we want a tank item? I want, like... Uh, I guess it's Archangel Rise. Does that even do anything? It increases his healing. I'm going to be honest, none of these items really matter that much. I'll just go Archangels, sure. And I should have rolled for Heimer 2-star and Shen 2-star. I skipped a Shen because I was going too quickly. We'll just roll our gold all the way to zero because the game's about to end anyways. Uh, nothing much there. It's okay. Maybe the game lasts two rounds. The player damage on stage 7, I believe, is 20 damage, so it's pretty much going to be the end of it here. Oh my god! God, Ari. Ari is so cracked. Did you just see what she did? 
Holy cow. I didn't even know she did that much damage. I'm going to be honest. I played a lot this set. But let's move on into the bronze game. That's where we're going to review some of the games that um, other people have submitted to me. So it should be a lot more fun there. But uh, we'll get right into it. All right, let's head on into the bronze game. So we have Petrocyte, Forest, Godolos Grove, Maris, Omegnum. It doesn't really matter what you pick pretty much at any rating. You just have to make sure it matches up with your legend. So, for example, if you're running Ezreal, you really like Glass Industries because you get to make a lot of items and get bonus gold from them. If you play Earth, all the ones that give extra emblems or extra traits are really good. But let's get into the game. We're on the Smegmo one, and we have a Kassadin, Galio, and Kled drop in the first round. So what you keep, what units you keep, is highly dependent on what the patch is. So if you're in a patch where these units are very powerful, they fit in a lot of the good comps right now, then obviously you want to hold on to them. Uh, other than that, you want to make sure that they synergize with units on your team. So based on the very fast reactions there, I'm assuming this player really likes playing Kled because they put Kled out, and they almost sold everything else, but good thing that they didn't because Poppy and Kassadin are both Bastion, so that's really good there. Oh, one thing to note. This video was submitted by one of my viewers, and if you want to be included in the next video compilations of the Unranked to Diamond series, I'll leave a form in the video description down below, so check that out if you want to add your video to the replay, and I'll just go over the game, and you'll be a part of my video. So this next shop here isn't as interesting. Whenever you have Bastions, you don't really need other tank traits such as Juggernaut or Brawler. So it's probably good to just leave it there, but you probably could have picked up the Void. Void could be helped up quite a bit, but it's not the most important thing ever. We are going to be using Poro here, so we get three random Augments. Yeah, the Edge of Night one, probably not good on any of the champions you have right now. Whenever you're picking Augments, you always want to pick for the now. Don't really pick for the later, but there are just some good like generic augments that are better and you could check out my augment guide for that. Uh, but right now you don't really have any good AP items, so probably reroll the magic wand. Infusion, really good for sorcerers, so if you're forcing sorcerers, take that, but I don't think we're really doing that this game. But I would have rerolled the augment on the left before picking this one because this really commits us into AP or attack speed comps with the rage blade uh, a little bit earlier than I would have liked. There are also better augments for that than the one that we ended up taking. Uh, we have Demacia's in, but I probably would play Bastions over the Slayer, because Slayer, yeah, we have the items on our Kale, but if you look at them, it's a Static Shiv and a Rage Blade, so Slayer buff isn't really going to help her do that much more damage. I feel like the Bastion's a little bit better because our only two-star unit is Poppy, so whenever you do have a two-star unit, you tend to want to try to play the traits around them rather than your one-star units, but overall we still would have lost this fight, but maybe it would have been a tiny, tiny bit closer. Not going to make too big of a difference so far, but uh, now we have a couple of interesting things here. So we have the Callista. Callista is really good with Rage Blade, so you should pretty much just buy the Callista, sell the Kale, play the Callista, play the Maokai, add in Shadow Isles and Bastion instead of the Kassadin. And then the fourth unit is going to be just some random good unit. Maybe you throw in Akshan, maybe you throw in more Shadow Isles just to get the shield. Uh, but we are facing a player who did not level up, so we are pretty good here. And we have an upgraded unit, so we would have won this round regardless of how you played. But I would have personally played the Callista here. She's just one of the best item holders for a Rage Blade. And because you already have Shadow Isles in your shop plus... Bastion from the Maokai, it's just very, very solid. I do know that a lot of players love to reroll Kale, and despite being a reroll champion, I'm not saying you can't do it, but even though she's used at early levels, she doesn't actually get better until level six. At level one, or like before level six, she just has like less parts of her ability. So she's not actually a good unit in the early game. Uh, we also did an interesting position here. The player moved Kale up front so that you get more value out of the Demacia buff. Probably don't need to do that because it's just risky having Kale all the way up front because uh, there are some like AoE abilities that could hit her a lot easier than if she were far away in the back. Uh, obviously still won the fight, so so far all these mistakes have not mattered, but there will be games where it will. For items, this player looks like they're going to go for a tier, so that's good. You could build a static shiv with that, but I probably would have went with the bow. Because I feel like it complements a lot of the other items that Rageblade users kind of use. Just having more bow items. Because it kind of turns into an on-hit build. I'm glad that this person's thinking about playing Sona. Sona definitely a much better Demacia than like some of these other units. But I do really miss the Kalista that we kind of passed up on before. I'm going to have trouble figuring out what comp this person really wants to play. Because I don't know 
why you would build a Rage Blade but then skip out on Callista. Champions that use Rage Blade is going to be stuff like Azir, Kaisa, maybe Aphelios, Zeri, champions like that. But if you take the Magic Wand augment, you have more so of an ability power leaning. So stuff like Zeri and Aphelios are not going to be as good. So you definitely want to lean more so into the Kaisa Azir route, which involves taking their champions such as Challengers or the Shirimas in order to kind of like pivot your team into it slowly. Uh, so let's see what we have here. Mm, don't really have anything that great. We put Slayer back in. This person seems to really like Slayer. Slayer's not like that big of a buff. Also overvaluing the Demacia buff a little bit. I guess this positioning's a little better than the one that happened before. But we would probably want to play Sona over the Galio. The reason why is because you have four melee units and you have one range unit. So you might as well diversify a little bit. Play a few more range units instead of like having too many melees because... It's always good to have a balance between frontline and backline, and that is kind of one way to do that in like a light way. Sona's buff is also pretty good for a Kale because it gives more attack speed, and when you're building Rage Blade on Kale, you generally are going to like attack speed a bunch. Uh, but lost that round, so one loss, two wins, two loss in terms of stage two. Nothing too bad overall so far, but probably need to reposition a bit and pick up some of the units we're seeing in our shop. I feel like the only path you could kind of go in, again, is the two comps, the Azir or the Kaisa comp with the Magic Wand augment, uh, just because it's like nothing else is really going to benefit that that much from it. Uh, but let's see what ends up happening. Maybe Kale is going to be kept for the whole time. Maybe we do like some sort of level 9 strategy that could be possible because Kale does end up being pretty decent once you hit those leveling thresholds. Uh, pick up the orbs there, we get a glove. So these items are not the best, so it's going to be a little tricky. I'd actually like to see what sort of happens. Maybe you build a Spear of Shoujin or maybe you build a Hand of Justice. Those could be two things that are pretty good. Probably Hand of Justice is the option I would go for here. Or I would just pick up this Karma and Spear of Shoujin, my Karma, play her as my carry in Stage 3. Ends up placing the Tactician Crown on Kled. Not too sure why, we don't have any Cybernetic Augment up, so I don't think we have the need to do that. But in early Stage 3, what you should be thinking about here is, what am I going to do with my team later on? The early game's kind of finishing up, and middle game is kind of a tricky part of TFT because uh, you kind of need to start committing to whatever you're trying to do. And... In stage two, in the early game, we kind of leaned more towards the AP route, so we probably should be picking up more AP champions. We've been skipping a couple of sorcerers, we've been skipping a couple of invokers, but I think this next augment here is going to be one of the most pivotal decisions of the game. Ends up being a silver augment, cybernetic bulk, bastion heart, slayer heart. Uh, yeah, you could reroll the cybernetic one, not that important. Branching out could be a good YOLO. Bastion, it could be possible. We do have a couple bastions. It's not the best, doesn't give us cast in two star, so I'd probably reroll that. And then the one on the right is Slayer Heart. Don't really have Slayer item. Oh, okay. We were I guess we're just forcing Slayers from the get-go. So I don't know if Slayers are that great of a comp, even if they are. Hard forcing this is a little odd because of both our items and our augments. So uh, AP is great for Gwen. Gwen's a slayer. But if we're playing Gwen, we skipped a lot of the Shadow Owls that we could have kind of used. If we're going for a more attack speed based Slayer build, such as like a reroll Z, then you would want to probably like Rage Blade's okay, but then you wouldn't pick the Magic Wand augment. You'd pick something else instead. So I, I just don't think this direction's that great. So that's going to be like the biggest mistake overall. The direction in this game is just not where it needed to be. And I think that's the biggest mistake so far. A lot of players are going to struggle with this, especially in bronze rating. But I think what you should do, because I have not listed out the Slayer comp in my meta snapshot that much. So if you want to just force a build, make sure it's just a good one. It's okay to force. It's not optimal to force, but at lower ratings, it's definitely okay to. Even at high ratings, it's okay to force comps, but it's never going to be optimal. So that means when you do force a comp, it really has to be so good that it doesn't matter that your decision is suboptimal because you'll still be able to kind of compete with everyone else. Uh, so there's just make sure you do that whenever you are sort of forcing a build. Because again, it's perfectly fine to force. I force builds sometimes. I know a lot of other players who are really very good, much better than me that also force a lot of times. But uh, you kind of have to pick and choose the spots to do it with. And this game right here just wasn't one of them. So I'm not exactly too sure what placement we get this game, but if I had to guess, it would definitely be in the bot four from the state we're in right now. Another mistake I'm seeing is that we have a lot of items that are being unused right now. 
And whenever you have more than three unbuilt item components, you should try to build an item. So the one that we should have built here was probably Hand of Justice. It works in every build. Yeah, it's not going to be best in slot on anyone, but it's going to work in a lot of different comps. So it's kind of a great item to build if you're not really too sure where you're going yet. Uh, so we put in a Sejuani after we level up to six. And then we actually decide to roll once here. I'm not too sure we needed to. If you were going to roll, I'd probably roll a lot more than just once. If not, I would just save my goal to do a level seven roll down on stage four one instead. So if you do roll down here, I would have rolled at level six on stage three two instead because you get more value out of it, get a couple of two stars, maybe prevent one of the losses that we actually got. And from there, hopefully econ back up, hit level seven on four one anyways, and then roll down again. So on this map, uh, the Maris Omegnum map, whatever it's called, the portal, you get two extra unit slots. So the tip to play this portal is to actually roll quite often. The reason why is because you have a lot more units to put in, so you have a lot more things that you could potentially hit. So rolling becomes like infinite value on this map. So if you roll early, it's actually pretty good. We end up rolling again here. I guess we're doing a level six slow roll. Maybe that was the direction we're going in and we're just forcing Zed. So that's again, mistake number like two or three at this point. We're forcing a build where we don't have the units for that build. So a lot of times in my guides, I say only go for something if you have a good start for that. And I'm assuming we're doing reroll Zed here because we have the Slayer crown and we have, uh, we're rolling on level six, right? So this would be one of those instances where we do not have a good start for it because we have zero Zeds. Even if we had one copy of Zed, like a one star Zed on our board with items, I'd still say that's not a very good start for this. You'd probably want at least a Z two star by stage three, one and, or maybe it's like stage three, two, unless we had like super duper amazing augments and the Z comp was like super good on that specific patch. That'd be kind of the only instance where I would go for Z if I did not have Z two star already. But let's say we are going for reroll Z and, oh, we're not going for reroll Z. What are we rerolling for then? Are we rerolling for Kale? Okay, if we're rerolling for Kale, we probably would have done that on level five. I guess you could say like we're a little unlucky that we have not hit Kale two star yet, but it's just sometimes it's not meant to be, you know? We do get a Lissandra two star here, and because the Slayer augment is a silver augment, we could just pivot out of this or just play like a Gwen carry type of build. Because we have the Lissandra two, we could kind of play around that. We have a bunch of invokers, and it's okay to give up a silver augment for no value. Uh, if you're able to pivot out into something a lot better. And then in this case, we do have a lot of items for invokers. We have a lot of good AP items. So we definitely could go for that. Something like a jeweled gauntlet, hand of justice, uh, maybe like a dragon claw for our tank line, spear of shojin, anything like that would be probably pretty decent, at least to play in like the meantime. A lot of times you can play comps in TFT that aren't necessarily comps you're going to play all the way throughout the end of the game. You could just play them in the mid game, even if the champions don't belong in an image that I posted on my meta snapshot. Obviously for a player in bronze, that might be a little more difficult to do, but that's something you could kind of try to aim for throughout your games. But yeah, we also have 69 gold at level six right now. So we probably should have rolled during the turn before, or just like save the gold to level up with. Uh, it seems that we're pretty intent on rolling at level six for some reason. I don't really know what we're actually going for. Is it some sort of Demacia build with Slayer? So it has to be Kale reroll. So if you are going to go for Kale reroll, you have to follow the leveling guide on bunnymuffins.lol slash, I believe it's like TFT leveling or something like that. It's just at the top of the website. Uh, but yeah, you, if you can't follow the leveling pattern, you just kind of have to play other things. Oh no, we're taking out the Lissandra. That's the only two-star upgrade we have. So we have 80 gold now. So we either need to, again, level up or roll down. Uh, one of the two options will work. So on a portal like Maris Omegnum, where you get two extra slots to your team, uh, we only have one extra slot right now, but we'll get two, I think, on like a later stage. You really, really, really need to know the ins and outs of your comp. And obviously, as a beginner player, you might not know all the ins and outs, but sometimes it's still good to pick that portal because maybe other players you're facing don't know what's going on either. So it might be a delicate balance. It depends if you're like really familiar with certain lines or if you're not, don't pick this, don't pick this portal. Uh, obviously it's not completely in your control because uh, there, you only have one vote out of eight players, but it's just something to kind of keep in the back of your head. But yeah, I think we're going eighth this game. It's pretty unfortunate because the other players we're facing 
four star Tristana, very powerful. You could kind of see that some of the other opponents were playing a lot of the meta builds. And at this rating, you don't have to play the meta. There are definitely going to be a lot of things that work, but you just have to have some sort of plan and still play correctly. For example, we're doing one cost reroll this game. I would not have gone for it this game, but even if you do, you still have to follow the leveling patterns. And if you don't, you have to realize that and then pivot into something else. It's perfectly fine to force something from the start of the game, but uh, again, you just need to do it correctly. So that's probably like my biggest tip on this game, biggest learning experience that we could kind of get here. Like if you are committed to a comp, you actually have to know how to play it first before you just hard force it on stage two. Oh, or you just accept the loss and then like don't think too much about it go to the next game and i am very surprised we actually won around i thought the video was going to end right here but let's see what items we can make probably want to pick up a third kale item here kale yeah array has a bunch of stuff we do have an extra tier so we could probably use that but spatula honestly could be good because uh, demacia and slayer spatula could be built but maybe we should have picked one up earlier we do end up getting the spatula with the negatron on our shen so we could just make a second Demacia Spat, which more than welcome. Pick up the Force of Nature from the golden thing there. And then, yeah, just play some extra units. Can we get to seven Demacia right now? I don't really... Oh, we could play Sona to kind of get there. So maybe take out, yeah, the Ari for this. It's not the worst team. I will note we are being punished by putting that Force of Nature on our Kled because we just don't have a third Kale item because Kled's getting the priority. So... You don't want to just put random like tactician's crowns on your units if you don't have an actual reason to. I'm not sure what the reason was for the first time that it was done, but it's actually costing us a radiant item right now. So definitely not something you want to do. I wonder who's doing most of the carrying. Is it Garen or is it Kale? It looks about even, which is kind of odd. So I guess it's mainly Garen because Garen's tanking a bit too. But wow, don't tell me we actually win two rounds. I did not think this comp would actually last that long. We might not even get 8th here. And we might also be able to hit level 9 like pretty soon, which could be a pretty big buff to Kale. So probably level up to level 8 right after uh, the neutral round, and then level up to 9 maybe on stage like 5-5 five, five if we make it there. Depending on how much gold drops from the neutral round, you might even be able to make it on like maybe 5-2 or 5-3. Alright, so we are facing 2-star Sejuani, 2-star Callista... Okay, it doesn't look good so far, but the team has been surprising me the past two fights, so never say never, I guess. I did notice that the player did keep rolling down gold at level 7, so I would have to disagree with that play, and we actually did win here. Holy cow, this team's actually not doing so bad. But I can't help but wonder, like, what are we trying to hit on these rolls? Are we trying to hit a Lux 2? Are we trying to hit some of the other random upgrades? When you want to roll, you generally want to have pairs, and we don't really have too many pairs. I guess we might be going for a Galio 3-star, but I don't think Galio 3-star is that worth it, in my opinion, and you'd roll for it on level 6, not level 7, so we're just on, like, the wrong interval, so I would have definitely just tried to level up instead. We end up actually leveling up here, so that's pretty good, even though we did waste a roll or two. Uh, yeah, sure, just put in Ari. We should probably put in Lux for someone else, maybe over the... Yeah, we don't really need Set. Uh, or maybe put in Lux over Sona or something like that. Honestly, the fact that we're not 8th in this game is already a miracle, but we're facing someone with Rise 2, Azir 2, Jarvan 2. Surely we don't sneak another win right now. Because that would actually be very impressive from this Demacian team. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think this is going to be it. Unless maybe we lose by like one unit. Whoa. Don't tell me we win. Okay, no, we don't win. So we do end up getting knocked out here, but don't commit to a comp unless you actually have a good start for it. And also try to formulate like more of a longer game game plan and look at the other units in your shop. I feel like missing out on the Callista might have been the biggest thing there. Uh, but let's move on into the next game, which is going to be the silver game. So Shreeman Bazaar, Orange Forge, Petrocyte Forest. We're using Poro again here, but this is a different player than last game. I kind of always like Shreeman Bazaar. I don't think any of these are too polarizing. Uh, but we do end up getting that, and it's the player we are watching. In Shuriman Bazaar, you get uh, an extra component on each champion on the carousel, so you pretty much just have a couple more item components throughout the game. We get a Callista and an Echo from the orb drop, so those are two very interesting options. Callista, obviously great for all the challenger players, and Echo's really good for all the Piltover players. And holy cow, look at this next shot. Aurelia and Samira just chilling right there. Nope. Okay, at least we got the Aurelia. I would not sell the Tristana even though Yurei bought it and it was a mistake. 
What you can do instead is wait until the gold drops from the neutral round, and then after that, sell the Tristana and then buy the units you want. We also want Jin here. Jin's in Ionia, so Ionia is great with Aurelia because she's one too. Definitely want to pick that up. Probably going to sell the Renekton if we do not get gold dropped here. So again, in this case, uh, we didn't really get punished for selling the Tristana early, but in other cases, you very well could be. Uh, but we definitely should have picked up that Jin. We see another Jin here, but luckily we get bailed out. We have four Challenger to start the game. We have the Warwick, Aurelia, Samira, and Callista, so we pretty much already won stage two. Definitely still want to pick up the Jin though. I know a lot of players think like, oh, if I have Bastions or Bruisers early game, that's like the default tank line. And especially since you have the extra gold here, you should buy this Jin. But even if we didn't, you should sell Renekton and buy the other person. Uh, we'll talk about the augments first. So Patient Study, great for power leveling. Pandora's Items, great for perfect items. Scrappy Inventions, they nerfed this. I don't really like this one, so probably re-roll that one. Uh, but yeah, probably could re-roll all three of these. None of these are like that standout. But you have my bow. That one could be pretty useful because we do have challengers out right now. Bow items are generally pretty good. But I would probably re-roll the other ones before solidifying this pick because it's not like that that good quite yet. So uh, perfectly fine to take this much time on your augment round. I think idealism is even better than you have my bow because idealism... No! Idealism is really good already. But we also have a second hand of justice on our bench, which makes the power of the augment just that, that, that much better. Good level up here, drop in the Kalista. We should put the Samira next to the Kalista so that we could chalice the Samira. Uh, I guess you could reroll the augment, but definitely want to slam a static ship here. Kalista plus static ship for challenger auto win stage two. And I, I talked about auto win before. And obviously when I say like you're a one stage two, I don't mean you like guaranteed win streak every single game in stage two because a lot of opponents could have some crazy boards out there but you pretty much have like the ideal start i can't see this board losing more than one round i get it you could blow 21 to 3 leads it still happens in life but like yeah chances are it's not going to happen twice but luckily we won that first round hopefully we get a useful item zz rot incredibly powerful but again static shiv Callista, so so good we could look at the stats on I believe it's like Shadow Owl Crown. It's because you get a Callista and a Static Shiv. The Crown is good just because of that. It's not because Shadow Owl is good. It's not because the Emblem is good. It's only because you get both a Static Shiv and a Callista. It's very, very powerful. But we definitely should be keeping the ZZ Rod. ZZ Rod's one of the best early game items. We can look at all the stats on all the different crowns that give ZZ Rod portals. They perform very, very well as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see what else we get. Okay, a Crit and a Rod. You should also just build items just because items are good. I feel like that's a very valid thing to do. We also see a Karma here, so we could definitely play some Ionias very, very soon and a set. So maybe right now, instead of four Challenger, we should just play Karma and set anyways because they're just very powerful units and it buffs up Aurelia a ton. I am going to lose my mind right now because I see a Static Shiv on the bench. We have a Rage Blade. Rage Blade and Static Shiv has so much complementary power together that it's literally hurting me inside because we have a game gifted to us. We even made a mistake earlier, and then we get our mistake making up for by giving us a new static shiv to use, and we're not building it. So I actually know this player personally, so I'm gonna be yelling at him later because of this game. Holy cow, I'm actually so triggered right now. Also, we sold Samira when we should have sold the extra Aurelia, and like this Karma, very, very powerful. Karma is like one of my favorite units right now. Anyways, lots of good stuff here, but we have Pandora, so just get like a high cost unit. We have a great static shiv on this Darius, but I doubt they're gonna build it. Now I'm sitting here wondering, what comp are we gonna go for? Because we built the Rage Blade already, so what are we gonna actually go for after that? We're gonna end up playing this Darius for Juggernaut, slap the bow on him. I'm not sure why you'd slap the bow on Darius instead of your Callista. We still can build the static shiv, so I think this is gonna be one of those moments where people say stuff like, oh my god, I keep getting the same items, how unlucky but sometimes you could just use the item that the game gives you. That's another thing. But I really don't know what they're going for because with the Rage Blade, again, we talk about Rage Blade comps in the previous game. It really just benefits from a lot of other good stuff. So maybe he's forcing an attack damage comp because Rage Blade Static Shiv is kind of like peanut butter jelly. They just have always gone together throughout the whole history of TFT. But if you don't go for that, you'd probably go for some sort of attack damage build, something like a Death Blade. But we had double sword drop earlier, so I don't know uh, why we didn't build Death Blade if that's the case. So that tells me we're in a situation of the player doesn't really know what to do right now, which I guess it's fine. You don't always have to know exactly what to do. 
But in those cases, you should always play stuff that is a little flexible. So sure, slamming Deathblade forcing AD would have been good. Sure, slamming Static Shiv forcing ability power could be good too. Uh, but let's say you're one of those players that doesn't want to do one of those. What should you do instead? You want to stay flexible. Well, what you can do is use a tank item on our bench right now, Protector's Vow, because every single comp uses uh, tank items. And we also had the ZZ Rob Portal from before. ZZ Rob Portal can fit in every comp, and you could always reroll it later on a neutral round. So that's one of the other things that makes me think like, hey, what are we actually going for? Because we just lost a ton of value from our items right here. This was an easy five game win streak in stage two. What's most unfortunate about this situation is that it wasn't the case of multiple mistakes. This player just simply didn't know that Static Shiv is a good item in the meta, but even if you didn't know that, you could build the Deathblade, you could have built the ZZ Rot, uh, but it was just the same mistake for the entirety of the stage. So it wasn't the case of like having like multiple mistakes, it was just not knowing one thing that's kind of causing this. Uh, but if you probably fix that, probably would climb very, very quickly. Interesting. So instead of the Protector's Vow, we're building the Dragon Claw, or we're keeping the Dragon Claw, which I guess is fine. Dragon Claw is not a bad item, but you typically want to scout first before you use it. Items like Dragon Claw and Bramble Vest. Bramble Vest is really good against critical strikes, so you want to scout your lobby first. If people build Jeweled Gauntlet and Infinity Edge, of course, build the Bramble Vest. If there are a lot of people going for magic damage comps, Dragon Claw is going to be good, but we don't know that right now. So even though you're building the item, I don't care if Dragon Claw is S tier or F tier. No matter what, if you're building this item, you have to scout because that's where most of the value comes from. Tier lists are only going to tell you so much because each individual game of TFT is going to be different from all the others. Not really. Maybe some metas, you play the same thing every single time, but that is a discussion for a different day. Uh, so maybe another thing we could be doing is probably waiting for a certain amount of champions to show up in our shop and then forcing that comp and then committing our items later. That could be very possible. Maybe that's what this player is doing. Honestly, we're at 94 health, which is pretty good. Like, we're probably still going to end up doing pretty well this game, but it could have gone, like, a ton better. Okay, some interesting options here. Probably want to reroll Double Trouble. Probably not going to be able to hit a bunch of three stars right now. You only want to get that if you get a bunch of three stars. Gifts from above, probably not the best augment to take if you're a beginner. Transfusion, same thing. It's more of, like, a more advanced type of augment. So, yeah, rerolling, that's fine. Deathblade and Infinity Edge. If you're forcing AD, that's pretty good. With the items you have, you... You could take Overwhelming Force, but it's not my first choice. Okay. Gifts from above. Not the worst. Could be better, but not the worst. Still pretty decent. We're going to slam the Titan's Resolve, so we want to... Are we playing some sort of Bruiser comp? Is that what we're doing? I apologize for saying Bruiser, because Bruiser is a trait in TFT. When I say stuff like Bruiser items, I mean stuff that's like half tank, half damage, such as like Titan's Resolve, maybe like a Bloodthirster things of that nature because yeah it's kind of just like a common item combo but all right so one thing with gifts from above you may have seen it already notice how we got a static or a zeke's herald from gifts from above so you kind of want to have your units close together whenever you have this augment those without items because they might get chalice or zeke's and you might get some extra value by placing your units next to each other it's a very small thing it's not going to be the end of the world but uh, overall like this augment's okay it's good in games where you don't get a lot of items, but since we're in Shreem and Bazaar and we ran Pandora's items, so we got like a bunch of extra item components, it's not the best on this one. But if you're running a legend that does not give items, such as like Aurelian Soul, if you're on a portal that doesn't give extra items, gifts from above can be pretty good for itemizing like your leftover carries. Uh, let's see what we have here. We have... Hmm. So I know he's not going to build Static Shiv. What else could we go for here? Do you want to keep any of these components? You probably want like a sword here because you want to build like a Bloodthirster, I'm guessing. That is double Anima Visage on this Swain. That's going to be like one of the tankiest units on planet Earth. Not at one star, but... <sighs> Callista's unironically one of the best champions at dealing with this, but I don't think our tank line's strong enough to kind of enough time for that especially with like a two-star Tarek, two-star lissandra holy cow this other player is so 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 strong are we going like challenger is he building yasuo items if that's a case like we need to start building like kaisa items as well since we have pandora's just go for the highest tier unit so we should have picked up azir here azir also has guard breaker that's a very buildable item right now but overall we pretty much just lost a gold here because that's kind of the point of taking pandora's items you get like perfect items every time 
So you don't need to pick and choose on the carousel. You just always go for the highest cost unit unless you want to use that unit right away. But since we ended up selling Rek'Sai, it's kind of a waste to take in. So we're dropping the sword on Callista. We built the Sunfire Cape. Sunfire Cape's a fine item. I wouldn't say it's something I would take Pandora's items for, but I've seen worse things, you know? Uh, but sword on Callista, I would have put the sword on Darius because it seemed like you're going for Yasuo items, but we'll see what they actually end up cooking up later on. Darius not going to do too much right now because he is a one-star unit. In fact, our whole team is one-star, so I think our whole team's not going to be doing that much. Jin does have IE, but we rolled a Bramble Vest from Gifts from Above, so I guess we win this round. But I know a lot of people ask, like, what's the difference in the playing strength between each elo? Uh, it's kind of, hopefully you are able to see kind of the differences right now, both from observing the player that we're watching and looking at other people's boards as well. You may notice as time goes on, holy cow, we just got Callista 2-star. As time goes on, as we go further and further into this compilation, players will be getting better and better. So what does that mean for you if you're trying to climb? Well, it means that some strategies that work for you in bronze or silver or iron may not necessarily work in gold, may not necessarily work in platinum, diamond, or anything above that. So one thing to note is when I watch one of my friends play, not this one, but a different one, we'll see his diamond game. But he's diamond right now. He's been grandmaster before, so he definitely knows his way around the game for the most part. However, when I watch him play, I don't play like how I would play on my account because the games I see in Diamond are a lot different than the games I see on my own account. This isn't a do as I say, not as I do type of thing, but it's more of a case of the metas are just different. On my main account, everyone's on this patch at least is doing like a hyper roll down at level 7 where they just go for Kai'Sa and Azir and Lux. For frontline, they go for Yasuo, Jarvan, and Nasus. And because people are only going for those four cost units, you pretty much have to roll on level seven in order to hit them before everyone else does. Because if you do what's called a fast eight strategy, which makes the most sense for these types of comps, you're not gonna be able to hit those units because everyone's gonna take them because there are only two viable comps in that specific meta. However, when I watch my friend play who's in diamond, I actually do recommend doing a fast eight because he has so healthy and so much gold that all the people rolling down at level seven because they watch someone else do it, don't actually know how to actually make a board that's powerful, so they don't actually knock him out early. So he's allowed to instead level up to level 8, and we just do fast 8 on his account, and it's been working out great. So you always have to like tailor your play based on your exact game, not necessarily even the elo, just the actual game, and scout around, see if people are actually powerful or not, and then tailor your rolling and econ decisions from there. Uh, but let's move on into this last augment round. Ooh, another prismatic. Golden ticket, binary, roll the dice. It seems like this player wants to re-roll a bit. I wouldn't mind taking golden ticket, just level up to level 7, do like a 3 cost re-roll or something, or just re-roll everything. Uh, maybe even lucky gloves, because we have a thieves glove on our bench. We could get two lucky gloves. It could be kind of fun, even if it's not like the best thing ever, because golden ticket's also not the best thing ever. So what are we actually rolling down for? Are we going to do a Callista re-roll? We're... Skipping a... Why did we not pick up Yasuo? We have so many challengers already. Yasuo is a challenger. I, I just really don't know what we're going for. That seems to be a common pattern of the games we've kind of spectated so far. Where I feel like they're probably tunneled on the wrong thing. But you always have to play what's on or what's in your shop. So what's on our board first? We have four challengers. So it makes perfect sense to go into challengers because we also have great items for challengers. Titans can go on Yasuo. A Rage Blade could go on Kaisa, and then we have Pandora's item, so we could build whatever the hell we want later on, and then the tank items can go on Shen, right? So we have a perfect start for any sort of challenger build, any sort of like Ionia build, but we're not doing that for some reason, which is fine. You don't have to always play the same comp that's on your board. You could always pivot into something else, but I just don't really know what we're trying to pivot into right now. Uh, so we'll kind of have to see what happens there. Also, we built a Thieves Glove, but... It's going to get re-rolled, so we probably just shouldn't have done that. Or if you want to keep the Thieves' Gloves, just put it on one random unit in your shop right now. For example, you could just buy the Swain, put the Thieves' Glove on Swain, and then the item won't change in the next round. So that's like a quick little tip over there. So we have Aurelia 2-star. We have Zeri 2 for some reason. So I guess we could go Cannoneers, probably sell the Callista, put these items on Zeri, and pretty much pray that we don't like die out from this. But we did have the free re-roll. Hmm, are we going like for a Zonka? Like, I just don't know what's going on here anymore. 
This game, I definitely would have picked up the Yasuo and the Shens that showed up in our shop. Definitely would have had the static shiv. So we'd probably be at like 80, even like 90, even 100 health right now if I were playing. But since we're not, we can't like go off those guidelines. But we do have a Zeri 2 right now. So we probably could play some sort of Cannoneer build with the Rage Blade. Maybe we could kind of like figure that out. But again, Protector's Vow is on the bench. It's just a good item in this specific patch that we're covering. So you just have to know what the good items are. I'll be coming out with an item guide pretty soon. So subscribe below if you have not already on that. A lot of people ask me what data sites are good out there. And I'm actually working on a data site. So if you head on over to teamfight.lol, go to stats, go to items. The site's not complete yet. I'm planning to add a lot of other stuff to it. Uh, but you could pretty much just sort by average placement, play rate, common champions it shows, performing champions it shows, and like good item combos with it. So you can kind of look at that to get like a general grasp of what's going on. But I will be making a ton of adjustments and improvements to this. It's in like not even the first presentable phase yet, but I kind of just want to like show you guys because a lot of people ask me about that. Um, but yeah, tons of improvements. I hope to like simplify the data searching process a lot because all the data sites out there right now they show a lot of unnecessary information. So I'm trying to like remove all that information that no one actually cares about. For example, do we even care about win rate or top 4%? I personally don't. None of the players better than me do. And no one, no one cares about it. The players worse and better than me don't care about it. So why do people show it? We only care about average placement. So uh, that's the only stat that we're going to show. So it prevents a lot of like data overload and a lot of confusion and makes the whole process a lot simpler. But tons of other improvements that are gonna be coming your way on that site, but definitely something to think about for now. Um, but yeah, so Protector's Vow, good item. Not much else to say uh, apart from that. Um, also, if you watch my stream, you'll notice that I build Protector's Vow a bunch, so that's another way to kind of like know what's good. If you have like extra time to burn and wanna like consume more TFT stuff, definitely my stream is something to try to check out. I'll try to stream like maybe like four days a week or something. I feel like that's a pretty good start for now. Um, man. I hate Callista sometimes because like you just see a lot of spears in certain units and if she doesn't actually use her execute function, it feels like a lot of wasted damage, but I guess that's part of the joys of playing Callista. We also see this redemption on the bench, so this is something that the data doesn't tell you, so I, I said a lot about data before, but something that data doesn't tell you is like how good redemption is as a third tank item. And we have two tank items already, so if you just add the redemption, it's really, really powerful, but for some reason we have this random belt on our Aurelia instead. Don't really know what that's doing there, so that's like another mistake that this player's making. I'm gonna make BT on the Darius, I guess, but that's really strange because we passed on Yasuo, and the only other holder of Titan's BT that I can think of is maybe the Urgot, but I think we had an Urgot and then we ended up selling the Urgot, so I don't think we're playing that either. Maybe that was a game before. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But okay, whatever the case, Gunblade pretty good, so glad we're keeping that. Uh, we're facing off against a Talia with three interesting items on Talia. Obviously, it's just an item holder for Azir, but I see a Azir on the other player's bench, so maybe they should just play the Azir right now because I think that combo is just really, really powerful on that champion, and he makes great, great use of it. But we're getting a little low now. We're 37 life. Ah, this golden ticket looking a little suspicious right now. You typically only take golden ticket if you're doing a reroll comp. The only problem is I just have no idea what we're rerolling right now. Is it reroll Darius? Is that what we're doing? Is it reroll Aurelia? I don't think it's reroll Aurelia because um, that's not a comp on my tier list. So I don't know why anyone watching my channel would ever go something like that. Uh, but tier list is found on bunnymuffins.lol slash meta and it just is the longest standing player run tier list in TFT So as long as I keep doing it, I could hold that title forever, right? <laughs> but we do see an ergot in shop So if we're playing around the Zeri, we definitely want to grab hold of this ergot I'd, I really just have no idea what we're rerolling for It's clearly not Warwick either because we just sold a Warwick is it rerolled Darius? Is that what we're going for? But we don't have any Noxus stacks. I noticed that we now have four juggernaut in but again, no Noxus stats and or stacks, and Darius pretty much revolves around it. Okay, so we looked at the recommended items from Riot Games. Good. They're honestly pretty pretty solid. So it's like, yeah, Rage Blade, we already have that. You could build a Gun Blade, Giant Slayer, anything like that. If you look carefully, they also put Static Shiv there, so we probably should have built that in like Stage 1. Or even now, we still could build it now. But okay, so we are going for a reroll Darius. So the reroll Darius build is actually like a reroll Noxus build. It's not so much a reroll Juggernaut build. So that's why when my friend sent me the replay and he was like, oh, I tried to play Juggernauts 
I was like, what is Juggernauts? Because it's not really a comp that's like a main version of the comp, so to speak. It's definitely like the secondary version that you wouldn't really play in this sort of meta because the first version, the Noxus one, is already a comp that you don't play that often. It's a good comp, but you have to build it the correct way. There's really not much else to say there. But, okay, so we get Set 2, we get Darius 2, we get Warwick 2. Not quite sure what the Aurelia is kind of doing there. I guess she's giving us Challenger for our Kai'Sa, but if you're playing Kai'Sa, there are much better comps to kind of play her in. Uh, we do get a random Set 2. This is going to be better than the... Uh, probably the Zeri that we have in right now. Probably better than the Aurelia. Yeah, just sell the Aurelia, put the tank items on Sejuani, and just play it for a couple rounds. So that's actually pretty heads up there. So... We have a comp, it's Juggernauts, but we also got a random four cost unit to two star and we are using it. We, in fact, we have two of them. We have the Zeri and the Sejuani. And I really like this a lot because not a lot of players in, uh, what rating are we in, in silver do this because they only click the units that show up on the meta snapshot. So uh, there are two mistakes that I see a lot at this ELO or at this rating. And it is either following the snapshot too closely or not following it at all. And this is one of those cases where we're not following it at all. And it's like a very easy way to kind of improve. And I know it's cringe sometimes to improve at a video game. Like some people are like, oh, why are you trying so hard? But if you're watching videos on my channel, like you're probably trying to get like at least like a tiny bit better at TFT. And the easiest way to do that if you don't know what's good in like certain metas is really just to look at the comp list because... You could do it whenever you want. Uh, you don't have to watch it all in one go. You could kind of just absorb it in pieces. You could also look at it while you're in game, just looking at a specific comp and ignoring the rest of the entire article because uh, there's like a search function at the top. Uh, we are facing off against someone who had Think Fast, so that's really dangerous because that means they're pretty powerful. They also have Social Distancing Prismatic, so that's actually a really good augment combo you have one econ augment which really should stabilize you and then you have one combat augment just to really maximize on all the upgrades that you got so very good augment combo always good to mix and match econ and combat augments sometimes if you have too many combat augments and if you're unlucky you don't end up getting the two star of your units if you get too many econ augments even if you hit everything your team's going to be too weak to compete everyone but we got sixth place here very troublesome. I also did notice that we put a lot of points into pre-leveling to level 8, but didn't actually finish the level up. And then we rolled down at level 7 instead, so we wasted a lot of gold there. So uh, I think you just really need to realize what comps are good. And Darius is good, but this just was not the game for it. If you do a re-roll, you typically want to have at least a 2-star of the champion somewhat early on or perfect items for them. We pretty much got handed a free Ionia game and we just said no thanks to it. So I think that's the biggest mistake of this game. But let's move on into the gold game. We have Yorick's Graveyard, Orn's Forge, and the Dreaming Pool. Orn's Forge gets picked. So in this one, you get an extra Orn item, some things to look out for. Now that we are in gold, I feel like it's better to talk about these things because it's a little more advanced, but there's thing called like item economy and it's pretty much like managing how many items you get and how to use them in the most efficient way possible. So whenever you're on a portal that gives extra items, it makes every other item that you make a little less valuable. I'm not saying items are useless, but if you look at the data, stuff like Orn's Forge, which is an augment which gives you a free Orn item, these augments typically do extremely well in the early game, but much worse when you pick that augment on stage four. So you might be wondering why that is. Well, it's pretty much what I mentioned already. At the start of the game, you have no items or like almost no items. So that one extra big item is going to be having a greater effect on your team than when you have like, let's say six items and then you add on a seventh. So how does that relate to portals? Because that was an augment that we talked about. Well, in portals is the same thing. The more items you have, the less important every other item becomes. So that means you should try to create maybe a few more support items such as Shroud of Stillness, Zephyr, maybe like a Zeke's or Chalice typically when you get like a ton of items. Uh, obviously this is only one extra Orn item so it's not gonna like make or break everything but it's just something to kind of keep in mind. So if you're ever in a tiebreaker scenario where you're like, oh, should I build the support item or another tank item or another damage item? If you have like a ton of items already, lean more towards the support one. So we are going to go into another viewer game for gold. We get a bunch of champion drops. I feel like we should pick up the Aurelia, maybe the Swain. Swain's an incredibly good unit in the early game as a tank. And we are going to be playing Caitlyn. So starter kit, binary, airdrop, roll the dice. I feel like if you're not taking starter kit as Caitlyn, it's a little weird. 
Uh, the power of this augment is very variable because they have changed and buffed and nerfed it in the past, and I feel like they're going to do it a little more in the future. But we got a Kai'Sa, so in a Kai'Sa meta, which is when this video was recorded, very, very good, obviously. So you could play Void, you could play Ionia's, you could do all sorts of wild things. But obviously right now we're going to lean into Void because we have the Cho'Gath already, we have the Kai'Sa. So what are some Kai'Sa builds? Because the way Starter Kit works is you get a bunch of units and... Uh, so we'll get another Kaisa later on. So getting two-star Kaisa, not a problem. So interesting item choice. We ended up building the Jeweled Gauntlet. I personally would have built the Gwinsu's Rageblade. Rageblade is a really good early game item. So if you're ever in an early game scenario, you might want to lean more towards that. Uh, also, if you're not going Challenger, and I know what this person went because it's in the title of the video that they sent me, but you don't know that yet. But if I'm going Challenger, I do not like Rageblade. If I'm going Ionia, I typically don't like the Rageblade either. But if you're going Kai'Sa with Void or Kai'Sa with Bruiser, you really want Rageblade on your Kai'Sa because she's not getting attack speed from other things. So uh, combine that with the fact that it's just better in the early game because fights last a long time, so you get a lot of stacks. I would have personally built the Rageblade here. But it's not the end of the world. Jeweled Gauntlet is a fantastic item on Kaisa, so nothing really lost or gained there, like nothing too much. Uh, so we get the Kassin, that's pretty good. We might want to level up here because we have Bruisers available and Cho'Gath is a two-star unit. So we probably want to level up and play the Renekton and possibly sell the Malachi's and the extra Cho'Gath to make interest. The reason why you want to do that is, again, you want to play around your two-cost units, or sorry, two-star units. So Cho'Gath, he's the strongest unit on our board right now, and you just want to give him buffs. Uh, Kaisa's very strong too, so Challenger would have been worth it. We possibly could have even played a Samira. So both choices, honestly, would have been perfectly fine, but you got to do one or the other. This Caitlyn Augment, I thought it was really good when it came out. Uh, but I haven't had a chance to truly play Caitlyn. Right now I'm just playing Ezreal, but it really just depends what patch it is for which legend I play. Overall, I think like the game should be balanced around Poro being the best, but uh, it is what it is. If something's broken, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing it, you know. Uh, as long as you're trying to win, that is. If you're not trying to have fun, like any little legend or any legend will do. So we finally get a Vi, so that's another Bruiser, and we're leveled up now. So just drop in a Renekton just to buff up the Cho'Gath. It's not Maokai because Maokai's a Bastion. Nothing wrong with Bastions, but we have a two-star Cho'Gath right now. Had we had a two-star Kassadin, probably would put in the Maokai. So now that we do have a Kai'Sa that we know we're gonna get later, we need to kind of plan around that. So maybe a level seven roll down could be done to get like a quick two-star Kai'Sa. We could also greet it and say like, hey, since we only need one more copy of Kai'Sa, it's okay to wait until level eight. Uh, that way, in case other people roll for Kai'Sa, if they hit it, it doesn't really matter because we just need one more of her, not like three copies. So you could think about whether you want to fast seven or fast eight. You just have to ask these questions. You don't have to commit to them right now. We're in stage two right now. So think of it as like a second date. You don't have to think about marrying the person, but uh, maybe you might want to know what like your goals are, right? Uh, so we have a bow. Getting a tier would be pretty good. We get a static shiv. Chain Vest on a Kassadin, that one's okay, not my first pick. We can't really build anything with it, and if you're playing Void, which it looks like we're doing right now, tank items don't actually do much on Void because the trait doesn't power up the unit. The trait powers up a Baron or a, like, the Scuttle Crab, whatever it's called, and those units don't benefit from items, so it's a little weird. So, Death Defiance, Randuin's Omen, Gold Collector, I think I'm going to lean more towards Randuin's here because... Again, when you play Void, you want to buff up other people. And also, if you're playing Bruiser, the Bruiser Kaisa version, Randuin's is also going to be really good because you get a lot of resistances on high health units. And that just makes the items or like the stats that you have that much more effective. Uh, but yeah, probably drop down someone to the second row. I probably would have put the item on the Maokai uh, just because you're going to always sell Maokai later on whenever you're playing either Bruisers or Void. And then you could just wrap units around the Randuins just to get the big buff. And pretty good thing because we have this Kaisa in the back and she's just going to be doing a lot of damage to them. And she stays relatively safe because she dashes around. Overall though, for not leveling up, we're 2-2 two and two right now. We're actually at a pretty decent amount of health and gold. In gold elo, you could kind of get away with not leveling up aggressively and still winning a couple rounds. But there are also obviously a lot of other factors that contribute to that. Uh, so we're facing off against a March of Progress player, which is pretty good because we're the same level as them right now. You really want to face them whenever they're like on a interval that's like the same 
level as everyone else and then like you don't want to face someone they like hit level seven really early or like hit level six really early so pretty good matchmaking rng do we still win this round looks like we do uh so we're able to three streak into the neutral round which is pretty big because again we didn't even make items either uh we can't oh it's gonna be close i spoke too soon we lost by one damage so we probably should have slammed a bow on our kaisa because it's probably going on her anyways so that mistake alone could already cost you like one placement, not getting a three streak into neutrals because we miss out on a lot of gold and we took a lot of HP. And I'm not saying you have to win every round in stage two every single game. That's impossible, right? But the games where you are allowed to, such as this one, you got to take advantage of it because over time, over like, let's say you play 100 games per set or even like 50 games or even 20 games a set, it definitely adds up. We end up getting a rod from the golems. We also get some gold and then another chain vest. So I really got a question again why we took the other chain vest. I'm guessing it's because we wanted an extra copy of Kassadin, but I, I really don't think it's that worth it because Kassadin 2 star isn't like anything game breaking. The Kassadin pickup also didn't even give us Kassadin 2 star yet, so that pick has been completely useless so far. So only if you're going for a unit on the carousel, it better be the most important unit for your composition. For example, if a Kaisa was there, or let's say a Yasuo was there and you're going the Ionia build, yeah, definitely pick it up. In other situations, if it gets you a two-star, such as, like, let's say you have two copies of Karma on your bench and you're like, yeah, I want a Karma two-star, and you're going Ionia, yeah, definitely pick that up too. But if you're going for a unit, as such as a Void unit right now, we're playing Void, so Kassin would be the unit in question, only pick it up if the item is also good on him, or for your team, or if it actually gets you the two star. If it only gets you a pair of them, and Kastin's not like a completely pivotal unit, don't pick up a unit specifically on the carousel for that reason. Also, we still have the Rage Blade on the bench, so we probably should just be building that. I think that's the issue that a lot of players kind of face. We've noticed this a lot in all the games we analyzed so far. People don't really know what the best items are to build or what's like a slammable item. Maybe they saw on like a certain website, or they looked at some other players' games and they're like, oh, they build these three specific items. Let me wait to get all of them. Not recommended. You have to know which items are like buildable because not building the bow early on on the Kaisa and then now building the Rage Blade is going to cost you a lot in the long run. So we did reroll all those augments. All of those were very average augments, so I don't disagree with that. And then we do end up getting Bastion and you could argue like, yeah, it's good to get Bastion because we can play four Bastion right now and it gives us Kassadin and two stars. So that's a perfectly good thing to do. Now we're looking at Kaisa's recommended items. We see a Rage Blade there and we're still not building it. So even Riot Games wants you to do this. Also, we have a Randuin's Omen on our Kassadin. We probably should reposition the Kassadin so that he affects more units. Good level up to level six here. That's following the leveling guide for standard leveling. So very good thing to do there. Whenever you can level up and maintain at least 30 gold, generally good to do so. But we're facing off against someone with level up. They have the hole breaker item, which only works if your unit's isolated, but their unit is not isolated. So both players are not getting maximum value out of their Orn item. So if there's ever stuff that you don't understand, it's okay to make the mistake in game, but just read about the item afterwards. So you have to read Randuin's Omen, see what it actually does. And then you'll be like, hey, it works if I hit more units adjacent to the person holding it uh, because more people get the buff so then next game you go into the game and then you hopefully have that and then over time you should climb rating because your team is just going to be stronger because they have more stats uh, same for the other player we just faced they're playing hole breaker and again it's fine to not know what it does in the first time you play it but eventually you got to know what it does in order to get the most value from it we made another mistake here so oh two mistakes we replaced Cho'Gath for Rek'Sai, so Cho'Gath 2 is always going to be better than Rek'Sai 1, especially since Rek'Sai is not actually a tank unit. Rek'Sai is a damage unit, so even though Rek'Sai is a brawler or a bruiser, not actually a tank unit. So if you're going for tankiness, which is what frontline units should do, you got to keep the Cho'Gath 2 star in there. Uh, another mistake we made was selling the extra Maokai. So selling the extra Maokais did not make us interest. We're still at 48 interest, and because of that, we potentially might be stuck with this Bramble Vest on our Maokai. We eventually want to shift that over onto Shen because Shen's a four cost unit, Maokai is a one cost unit. So Shen at two star is just going to be much, much stronger. So again, it's just like a very small mistake that it might not matter in this game, didn't matter in this fight, but over time, it definitely does add up. Let's see what this player does on the stage three carousel. So 
I want to finish up the Kaisa item. This player does not seem to like Static Shiv or Rage Blade, so maybe they're going to go for something like a Giant Slayer. That could be interesting to do. Uh, or maybe they want to itemize someone else completely. But let's see what they actually pick, because I'd be very interested in knowing. Okay, they're hovering over the tier, so I like that a lot. Yeah, just grab that. Grab. Oh, unlucky. So we don't know if they actually wanted the tier or not, but I'm assuming they did because they're hovering over it. Between Negatron or Chain Best, it's about equal. They're both equally mediocre here. We don't, we can't really build anything from them right now. Oh, interesting. I see what they wanted. They wanted tier for Archangel's staff, which is a good item on Kai'Sa, but you got to use a bow for something. I just don't know what this bow is going to be building if it's not Rage Blade. This is a great time to bring up the conversation of item economy again. So when you have items on your bench, you need to figure out some use of them, either the worst case use or like best case use. So you could look at some components and be like, hey, for Bo, maybe the worst case scenario is I build a ZZRop portal on someone. But if you're not using the Bo, you have to have some sort of plan for it later on. So for me personally, obviously, like the correct play is just to make the Rage Blade. Uh, but let's say you just don't know that. And obviously, I'm not going to repeat the same mistake every single turn because every single turn, we should be probably saying like, hey, there's a mistake. Need to build the Rage Blade every single turn. But that's not constructive because obviously this player doesn't know. But what makes the mistake worse is not having a use for the bow later on. So it's fine not to know like what the best early game slams are or what's slammable in the early game, but just have some sort of plan for your items. If an item's just sitting on your bench, it's just always going to be useless and you just get no value from it. And the whole point of TFT is to like get the most stats on the board in order to win rounds. So you need to just be having some sort of plan to use up all your items eventually. Obviously, like, doesn't have to happen now because sometimes you do have items sitting on your bench. But if we think about all the items that Bo could build, it really only builds items for Kai'Sa in, like, 99% of cases. But we're facing off against a Cho'Gath 3-star with Radiant Warmogs, Everfrost, and another Warmogs. That's probably the tankiest Cho'Gath I've seen in a while. Maybe ever. I still think we win. Wait, no, we don't win. Unironically, if we had Rage Blade, we probably would have won. But it's all good because we're about to reach level 7. We're going to probably do a roll down here. I'd probably just level up to level 7 right now already because you get better shop odds. So losing a gold here, and we're probably going to get gold from Wolf Camp. And worst case, you sell the extra Samira. Just like level up to 7 here. In certain metas, it's even worth it to roll on 7, even during the neutral round. Because sometimes if specific units are very contested, and in this specific patch, Kai'Sa is very contested you need to just like roll down before everyone else finds Kaisa before you. But I uh, probably should roll down here. We probably want like another copy of Shen. There's also a possibility of fielding like six Bastion or something like that. Two star Kalista, two star Kaisa, all very useful stuff. So another reason to roll during the neutral rounds is if you're too slow to roll during the actual stage four roll down. So obviously it's optimal to roll down on stage four instead of stage three, seven, because we get an extra round of interest gold and the more gold you have, the higher chance you have of hitting stuff. However, if you're too slow to do the roll down, we probably should have rolled down to maybe like 30 here. Then you got to do it earlier on and just lose out on a couple of gold. For example, on the neutral round, if we rolled down to 30 gold there, and then on the stage four round, we rolled down to, let's say, 10 gold, we really only lost two gold of interest. And two gold of interest is just one roll. So unless you're literally like one roll off of things, it's generally going to be worth it to roll on the neutral rounds if you're too slow to do it on the actual round. And yeah, there are a ton of games where you are actually one gold or one roll off from hitting something, but saving yourself like 15 HP, definitely well worth it in like 99% of cases. So we re-rolled a bit. Uh, probably should re-roll rolling for days if you're not, if you're going to take Unleash Arcana. So uh, that's just seeing one less augment in your game over time. That mistake's going to add up. Also, what do we want to use these items for? Because we already do have a Jeweled Gauntlet on our Kaisa, so she can't really equip that item. So who else are we going to put a Jeweled Gauntlet on? You really have to think about that. Maybe Callista, but okay, we do end up getting the two-star Kaisa there. Uh, hat on her, yeah, that's fine. Let's roll down a bit more. Mm, maybe one more upgrade or just stop at 30, one or the other would be a good point here. It's always tricky to know exactly how much gold to roll down. And oh, why are we going for Warwick three star? Uh, we definitely should have stopped rolling at around 30, but there's no exact science on like when you should stop a roll down because it's always dependent on how strong other people in your game are. 
some games, everyone's super strong for no apparent reason. And in those cases, you need to roll to zero every single time. But then there are other games where people are just really weak for no reason, even though it's like the same level of play. Let's say like we're looking at a master game. Some games, people have like full two star everything on stage four one, and other games, everyone has one star everything on stage four one. It's the same ELO, same augments, same everything, but it just happened to be a game where people were kind of low rolling all around. But in this specific game, like hitting Kai'Sa 2, we have some two-star tanks. Uh, generally, probably would have been a decent place to stop. Normally, the way I see it is if you have a two-star tank as your main item holder and a two-star uh, damage dealer with your main item holder, it's generally like a good place to stop because the rest of the units on your team don't really matter that much. Also here, we should probably replace the Samira with the Yasuo just because Yasuo is a much better unit. Also, probably could build like a ZZ Rot or a Zephyr. Probably isn't the worst thing in the world. Actually, I changed my mind because in a Bastion comp, ZZ Rot and Zephyr really aren't that great of items. Zephyr being especially useless because Bastions get a lot of resistances at the start of the game. So it's not really worth it to Zephyr one of their damage dealers because you already have uh, more damage resistance. So they're not going to do that much. So it's better to build like probably other items instead. This game's going to be pretty interesting though because... We're going for three star warwick we probably want to itemize that it's obviously not ideal to go for three star warwick but if you're that close like you might as well just hit it but a common beginner mistake that i see is getting three star units but not itemizing them three star units are pretty worthless without items so on this carousel i'd really like to see this player go for a warwick item we end up getting a glove uh, maybe you could build like a qss or something like that but i'd probably just hold off on all the items right now Oh no, don't build a Last Whisper. Okay, Last Whisper bad on Callista because Callista mainly does true damage, doesn't do so much of physical damage. I mean, she does do some and she's a challenger, so she attacks really quickly, but that's not really like the main part of her damage. So I know I've been talking about like slamming items this whole game, and normally it is good to slam items, but this is one of the few instances where it is not because this item is just long-term not gonna be very good for your team. Uh, but maybe they have a different plan for it. Maybe they want to put it on Yasuo or something. But even then, Last Whisper is like okay on Yasuo. It's not something that you're like, wow, I'm really excited for it so that you would build it. And it's not really good on Warwick either. But we have two star Kaisa, so we're going to steamroll most of the other players in this game right now. But I feel like that's carrying this player more so than the uh, items. Oh, I just realized we sold our Yasuo. Oh, no, no. If we're playing Challenger, you got to be playing Yasuo because he's a four cost unit and he CCs. So you really just got to be playing him. I know this game's going to be a little complicated for gold players because with the Bastion heart, there's no such thing as like a Bastion comp, at least right now. So you're going to have to go away from like a composition tier list and kind of make things up on your own. And that makes thinking about everything else in the game much more difficult because your mind's kind of like thinking about two things at once. I get that a lot personally whenever I pick an augment that I don't really have practice with. And it makes me make a lot of like basic mistakes that I normally would never make. We do end up hitting this three star Warwick, but we just need items on him now. Hopefully we get some off these Raptors here. And uh, we got like some okay ones. Nothing, nothing too crazy though. Maybe we could build like Handed Justice or like Quicksilver on him. Maybe like a Guard Breaker even. Actually, these items are, aren't that great on him. A Spear Shojin on Callista, that, that's not horrible. That's usable. Guard Breaker, I, I would have preferred QSS, but Guard Breaker's fine. And then, yeah, sure, Chalice in the back line, not the worst thing I've seen. The items only got really messed up in the late game because we built the Last Whisper and the Zephyr early on in Stage 4. Had we not done that, we actually could have gotten some really good items on everyone here. But it's not going to be the end of the world because we're 59 health right now. Probably still could top four this game realistically. Also, Kaisa two star, so we've been chilling for a long time. But you notice the rolling down mistake is really hurting us already because getting to level eight in state and set nine is very very difficult because it just is so expensive nowadays. So a lot of games where you're wasting like a little gold here and there is really really going to affect you even if you don't realize it right away. Also, we're rolling down now. I don't know why we're rolling down because. Uh, what are we looking for? Shen 2 is the only upgrade we need. And I really don't like only rolling for one unit because we only have one out when we roll down. You want to have multiple outs generally. So if that is the case, you generally should just try to level up instead. And leveling up, it's always going to be a guaranteed upgrade. 
If you need to find out more on this, check out the fundamentals of TFT video that I have or like the article on my website on bunnymuffins.lol because that post pretty much summarizes everything I'm trying to say here, but much better because uh, it gives you all the options you can have during a TFT turn and tells you when and how to do each and every one of them. Uh, but we still win the round again because Kais is broken on this patch and we have her two star. So we're again getting bailed out by that. Another thing we need to look at is that we're at 59 health, which is first place in the game right now. So whenever you're in first place, you are given the privilege to be a little more greedy than you normally should be. So with that in mind, you want to just wait and try to think of things that could possibly guarantee you an actual first place instead of just being first place on stage 5-3. That typically means asking yourself, what 3 star 4 cost can we try to hit? What 3 star 3 cost can we try to hit? Can we hit level 9? Can we get a bunch of 2 star legendaries? All those questions should be asked. And since we can't really get 3 star Kaisa because uh, we don't really have many copies of her and we're not level 8 yet, that's probably out of the question. But maybe we could get a bunch of 2 star legendaries, which is a pretty decent late game cap. And to do that, you need to level up to level 8, possibly level 9 to kind of fit everything in there. Maybe we get like a crazy Heimerdinger turret combination. That could be another thing we could kind of go for. Maybe we could fit in something like 6 Bastion or 6 Challenger. All these things are possible. You just have to kind of think about the possibilities and then act on them. But whenever you're in first place, all things to definitely think about. So probably Hand of Justice or QSS here, just because we want uh, items on our Warwick. We don't really have any Slayer, so I don't know why we took Slayer Spatula. But maybe that player didn't recognize the icons and thought it was something else. Perfectly fine to do. We just need to learn all the emblems for our future games so that we know when to take which. Uh, so we do level up here, that's really good. We could probably also pick up this Heimerdinger. But you saw the effects already. Like we rolled maybe like 20 or 30 gold on level 7 during stage 5. And all those roll downs could have been used at level 8 instead with better odds for everything. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments right now. How would you cap out this team comp? And also just say that you're referring to the gold game and maybe timestamp where I'm talking about uh, for all comments actually, just so I know exactly what your questions or comments are referring to. And so I, I just have more context. Uh, another thing is you may have noticed that a lot of these games are games that are user submitted. They're not actually my games. So if you want to be part of the video compilation, I am looking specifically for Azir and Ionia games right now. So go to the top comment or the description, you'll find this video submission link, and I need games from like iron all the way to diamond. But if you have games that feature different comps, that's fine too, I probably can use them eventually. We're facing off against some other players now, but they only have a Kaisa 1 star, Ari 1 star, so they're actually pretty weak. The Cho'Gath 3, decently strong, but I think we'll actually outscale this player once we hit our like level 8, level 9 board. I don't really believe in the power of that Cho'Gath because if you just stack health, it's not the most impressive use of tank stats. But we're actually rolling down here a bit. I think that's fine. Uh, just because if we didn't waste so much gold earlier, we definitely could have went to level 9. But since we already wasted the gold, then you kind of like it's fine to roll down here because we're probably staying on level 8 for the rest of the game. I guess that's another common mistake that people make. They don't know when their comp can actually cap out or like when to go level 8, when to go level 9 in the late game. Essentially, if you are low health, so if you're below like 30 life, you got to be like just using all your gold as soon as you can. However, if you are high life, let's say you're like 60 life right now, you could count the amount of rounds it takes for you to reach level 9 by like estimating how much gold you gain each round. It's approximately around like 10 to 15 in most cases. And I normally estimate losing around like 10 to 15 HP per loss. So let's say you are 60 health and you're like 30 gold away from reaching level 9. You could sacrifice two rounds and you might just like go down to 30 HP but then have enough gold to reach level 9 later on. Uh, here again we should just get a Warwick item because we just want to itemize our Warwick. The tank item isn't bad, you could put it on Shen. Protector's Vow, very good on Shen too. But yeah, like... Whenever you have three stars, you gotta be using them. If not, you just shouldn't play them. I believe the Bastion we're missing is gonna be Poppy, so we have to find her somehow. Poppy and Taric, but six Bastion would be a pretty decent spike for us, especially in the late game. I think Bastion is a very good trait because fights last such a short amount of time. So Bastion buff is like working really hard, working overtime when it's actually active in the late game. And it's just because everyone's carries are like super itemized. So damage dealing definitely outscales all the tanks out there. Uh, so we're gonna roll again i think we just need Tarek. there's a Tarek. oh no we skipped it don't we want six bastion i feel like that's what we actually wanted but other plans that's okay too 
Randoon's Omen Protectors Vow. We gotta be itemizing the Shen. Shen's the strongest tank we have right now, because Shen's a two-star. And he's a high cost unit, so definitely gotta gotta do that. We did get Zephyr here a little unlucky, but whenever you run stuff like Chalice of Power, it's kinda hard to not get Zephyr because you have to move three units while the enemy team only needs to move one. So it's okay if you get Zephyr in, in a lot of those games. Uh, we're facing off against the Baron Nasher. Holy cow. We do not have a Giant Slayer, so I think we actually end up losing this round. Luckily, we're already top four. Maybe, dare I say, a top three right now. Oh, no. The, the person with two life actually won the round. So this might as well just be a top four. Uh, but rolling down, I guess we're just looking for Cassante 2. Nothing really much else to go for. But at this point, if you're just at one life, uh, I would just sell the Cassante on my board and then put my new Cassante in there and then put the tank items on Shen because... Shen is just like that important. Also, why are we running Maokai? We probably could have kept the Kassadin over the Maokai. I know we're getting the Shadow Isle buff or whatever, but if we're not playing six Bastion, probably should not be running Maokai in the late game. And that's another mistake I see. Sometimes people itemize one cost units in the early game, which obviously you want to do that, right? But then they keep that unit the whole game and then it ends up just not making that strong of a board for their team. We get knocked out to fourth here. Had we like built items earlier, probably would have gone a third. And then if we rolled and leveled up properly, probably could have won the game. But obviously we are in a gold game, so we're gonna be making mistakes. Even challengers make mistakes. But as long as you actively improve on your play, uh, you should be able to climb in the long run. But fourth place, still very good. In the plat game, we got Glask Industries, the University and Yorick's Graveyard. A lot of Poro users today, so I'm actually very surprised by that. In this game, we're going to be going for the Azir Lux Strategist build. So this is what the comp looks like in case you haven't played the comp before, but this is just like a general baseline of what could be used. We end up getting Yorick's Graveyard. So Yorick's Graveyard gives you an item from one of the players that dies. So what that means is in the late game, you get a ton of items. So what you need to be thinking about is how do I get to the late game? So you just slam items early even if the items aren't good, because you just need to live, and then you'll get perfect items later on from the people that die. We get a Kassadin and Cho'Gath drop here, so we get a Void Opener. Not bad. So far, we got a Negatron Cloak and then the Bow. Probably should pick up the Samira because we have Aurelia for Challengers. Probably should not be typing while we have orbs on the board. Okay, so mistake number one. Do your turn first. Do the typing later. Normally, I just mute everyone, but it's fine to type, right? Because the chat function's there. Like, why not type to people? Have some fun, you know, but you got to do your turn first. We potentially missed out on selling part of our shop and then buying up other things. And in this specific case, if we're going to be backseat gaming or hindsight gaming as well, we missed out on a Maokai 2 with a Viego 2 paired up with it. So it's like, you got to do your turn first, you know, and this is in Platinum. Platinum's like, I think top 5% of players somewhere around there. So you gotta, you gotta be paying attention to your game a little more, but it's okay, we won't harp on that too much. At the end of the day, we wanna be having fun, type in sometimes leads to fun. So tactical superiority, rich get richer, and tons of stats. So there are a lot of good comps you can make with tactical superiority, tons of stats, also very solid. Rich get richer, good if you're going for a lose streak, but it doesn't look like we are because we have some upgrades. So I'd probably reroll rich get richer, and then I think... If you want to force tactical superiority, you could go ahead and do it. Buried Treasures, obviously my favorite on this patch because I'm an Ezreal player. So I probably would just take Buried Treasures here, but uh, tactical superiority, nothing wrong with that. Very solid augment. The only issue that I don't like about it is it forces you to play a comp. We just sold Ma Oh man, we sold Maokai 2 when we have a Viego 2 paired up. So we probably should have played like Buried Treasures and then just play all our two stars. That probably would have been the strongest board. Because now we're playing Viego, but... We don't have the two-star Maokai to accompany it. Also, since we're pretty much forced to play Azir, I like that a lot. Slamming the Rage Blade. Finally, we have one player who's actually slamming the items that I like. This player definitely goes on bunnymuffins.lol and checks out all the meta comps along with my item recommendations. I guarantee it. So they clearly know what the meta comps are because they're going to be playing one of the strongest ones right now. But that's not enough because we saw other players try to play the Ionia comp and that didn't really work out so well but they know what items to slam early, so that's really a big step already. Is that really the difference between Platinum and Gold Silver? It might be, but let's see what else they're going to be doing in this game, because I get this question a lot. What is the difference between players at all levels? I'll probably do a statistical analysis on this later on in the set, but uh, pretty much, like, it's a lot of little things. Remember, throughout this whole video so far, I say a lot of things like, hey, you made a mistake here, but in this specific round, it didn't actually mean anything. 
but over 20 games, if you add all of those mistakes up, it's going to add to a lot of placements that you kind of missed out on. So that's kind of like what's happening here when you're thinking of like, what's the difference between a plat and a gold player. And hopefully this video kind of shines some light on that. Uh, so we're keeping our whole bench. That's probably pretty good because it would be pretty difficult to make interest right now. We have to think about what our actual front line would be. Normally with sorcerers, I do like having void front line. So we did sell a lot of the void units early on. We sold the cast and such. But if we're playing Swain as our main tank, you kind of have to think of other units that could kind of complement Swain. And there are not that many. The only other one could be probably like a Tarek, but Tarek's a three cost unit, so you can't reliably get that right now. Which is again why I kind of like using the voids or maybe like Bastion instead. Especially since we got a Bastion start this game. But one thing that I this player did that I really like is look at their leveling experience right now. It's eight out of 10. So they had 14 gold and they pre-leveled. This is gonna give them a better shop in the next turn and it does not cost them interest. If they're at 10 gold and they are four out of 10 XP, obviously do not pre-level because you miss out on an interest gold. But since they're not missing out on any interest gold, I really like that pre-level because they're gonna get a better shop in the next turn. Also, they already have a two-star Malzahar. So if you have some one cost upgraded units already, you do not need to be lower level to get them up to two star. Now for the carousel, we have a Negatron already. So I probably would have taken a rod so that we could build Ionic Spark, but that option's not available. So probably the chain vest is gonna be good now just to build the stone plate tank item. The other option is maybe Dragon Claw, but you really need to scout the lobby first to see how many people are going ability power comps. So let's say you did scout, when should we build a Dragon Claw? Well, there's some metas where Dragon Claw is a very good item, and there's some metas where Dragon Claw is a very bad item, uh, just based on its base stats. So let's assume it's a bad item. The only time I would build Dragon Claw then is maybe if five other players are going ability power comps and you could get a lot of value out of it anyways. If it's a good item, maybe you drop that down to like three, and if it's a mediocre item, maybe if four other players are playing ability power or magic damage, then it would probably be worth it. We get a Renekton 2 here, and I like this a lot, replacing the early game item holder from the Viego. Viego, we just kind of got to level two randomly and just used it as a random unit. So always use random upgraded units on your team, especially in the early game, because a two star unit is gonna be better than like some crappy synergy that you're gonna play instead. And then once you find a better unit to fulfill that role, because we have the Gargoyle Stone play right now, he replaces it with the Renekton 2 star. So I like that play a lot. Very nicely done. And because of that, we get to win streak into neutrals. Well, we probably would have won anyways, but getting the win's good. All right, there's no explanation there. We get a Swain 2 here. Absolutely ridiculous play. If Swain 1 beasts it out in stage 2, a Swain 2 completely kills it in stage 3. So we get a Belt Sword and a Champion Duplicator. And then holy cow, we get an Azir just like that. All right, this is what we call a high roll game. So right now, if we do not top four this game, we did something terribly wrong. We can't guarantee the win yet because we don't have Azir two star yet. We could also get incredibly lucky on everything else that happens in this game. But right now, the way I look at it is if you don't top four here, something wrong happened, especially since you're at 100 life. So we have to play with that in mind and then we think about how can we win the game? How can we increase our odds to win the game? Because in the games that you do get lucky in, you really, really, really have to take advantage of it because there are gonna be games where you don't do well and then you go eighth. So in the games that you do get lucky in and you only get like third or a second, you're not gonna have enough to undo that eighth that you got later on. So let's see how this player does at this game and I'll comment on what they should kind of be doing differently if I see the opportunity to do so. So onto the augment picking stage. Okay, probably want to ditch Ancient Archives, probably want to ditch Shoplifting. Combat Caster's okay. I think we do want some sort of combat augment here because we're on a win streak, and you want to keep that win streak up, especially since our board is strong because we have Swain 2 and we have a carry with Rageblade in Azir. So we definitely need some sort of combat augment here. I'm guessing this player's data checking right now because they haven't been clicking on anything, but Martyr, Magic Wand, probably both really good. Do not do Return on Investment, probably going to be Martyr. But if he takes Magic Wand, I would not be disappointed because you could build an item right away with it. So all these item augments that give you a component, they're only good, or theoretically, if the game's balanced correctly, they're only good if you could build an item with them right away. And in this case, we can, so that's a very good time to take the item because we could build a Hextech Gunblade. Oh no, please build Hextech Gunblade. I just complimented your play because I thought you were going to do something, but then you didn't do it. Okay, so... If this was gonna be your play, you should have taken Martyr, because Martyr just gives you automatic stat increase to your champions because you get like a battle buff, right? 
whenever a unit dies, your team heals for like some portion. So yeah, if you're not going to build the Hexec Gunblade, you should have taken that. Because we potentially lost out on a lot of power, and if someone else is like giga high rolling, they could have ended our streak here. And since this player took a lot of time picking their augment, I'm going to guess that they're data checking. There's no other explanation for it because their mouse wasn't moving. And this situation here is one of those times where data checking is not actually that useful. Because if you data check, let's say Martyr versus the Magic Wand augment, and maybe he saw that Magic Wand does slightly better than Martyr on stage 3. In those cases, people only take Magic Wand because they build an item with it. So if you don't actually build an item, you're missing out on a lot of value of the Augment, which again has a big bias with uh, how the Augment performed in the stats. Nothing wrong with using stats to like improve your play. Obviously, I do the same exact thing. But you have to know why certain things work in certain ways. And in this case, it's like people probably only take Magic Wand if they can complete an item with it. It's the same thing with like augments such as Golden Egg, where the data on Golden Egg is very, very powerful. However, people only take Golden Egg if they're giga high rolling. So in those cases, obviously, they're still going to do well even if the augment is bad because only players who are doing super well in that game are going to be taking it. So just some things to consider whenever you're doing data checks. It's always good to data check. I don't, I'm not saying data checking is bad, but you just have to know why things are the way they are. We ended up getting a bow off of Carousel. Bow's gonna be useful later, but not having a buildable item makes this win streak very suspect. And if the player we faced was even just like an inch stronger, we very well could have lost that game and lost our streak entirely. All good though, we're facing off against a Callista with Deathblade for some reason. Deathblade not very good on Callista because she doesn't really scale with it that well. Uh, with our items, we have four item components. So whenever, you have four item components or more, you definitely should try to build an item. That's like one of the rules I have. There are exceptions to the rule, but whenever you're in these situations, you really have to think, you're like, are any of these items gonna be even like remotely slammable? And in like 95 or more percent of cases, there definitely is an item you could build here. And obviously the answer to that one is either Hexec Gunblade or even like a Giant Slayer would possibly be good here. If you add on the fact that we're on a win streak and protecting our win streak is the most important thing ever, that makes it even more important to slam items. But we get an Azir 2 for free, so this is one of those rare cases where you probably want to just level up to level 8 rather than doing the level 7 lottery by rolling down because we already won the lottery, so you don't need to play anymore. I'm going to be really interested in seeing what this person builds as items. Hat's not bad. Again, I still prefer Hextech Gunblade and maybe even an RFC. RFC plus Rageblade is a very powerful combo because Azir stays like very safe and he gets a lot of attack speed early on and scales throughout the fight. So I actually would have liked to see an RFC here and then save the sword for Lux because Lux uses Spear Shojin, Hextech Gunblade, and like possibly the Giant Slayer as well. But uh, RFC, very good use of items on Azir because no one else is going to use the bows in this comp. So again, when we talk about item economy, continuing that conversation from last game, uh, you have to think about what item components are going to be good on each champion, and Azir is just the best user of bows. Lux is probably going to be the best with the rods and the tears, and then your tanks are going to be best with uh, belt and negatron, chain, things like that. Uh, so we get a bunch of items here. It's not parting gifts because you only use ZZ Rod for that. We rolled, you have my bow, and that's very good to do. Okay, so on, you gotta reroll all your augments because, wow, like we just missed out on potentially like giga broken augments. Not that Strategist's Heart is bad. Strategist's Heart might be very well be the best augment here, but just reroll the other ones just in case. There's no reason not to on stage four. You may notice when you watch like the very best players play, sometimes on stage two and stage three, they do not reroll all their augments and then they pick one of them before they do that. The reason why they don't do that is Let's say they have like the second best augment that they could possibly get on that round. They don't want to re-roll the other augments to find the best one because they want to find it in the next stage. Because if you roll that augment on this round and then you pick the best augment and then you forego the second best augment you could have had, you can't get the second best augment in future stages. So that's kind of why they do that. By the way, great level up here because we could maintain above 30 gold, even though it's off an interval. But going back to the augment rerolling, on stage four, you can't see other augments anymore. So on stage four, you should always use all your rerolls on all the slots that you're not gonna pick. So we're facing off against a Karma 2 that's pretty jacked up, but we got a zero two, so we're chilling. We just have to wait for maybe um, the Lux, but we're not in a rush for that. We have the two-star Akshan, which is very nice. Akshan actually does like a ton of work even without 
much things or many resources like uh, invested in him. But getting five Shurima would probably be a good thing to do here, even if though it's not in the Azir and Lux comp. So when you're in stage four and stage five, you don't need to get the boards that you see in my pictures on my tier list because those are going to be for the late game. There's always sample, uh, like transition boards that you can kind of use before you get into those places. And this is one great example of that. We have a two-star Akshan, so getting to five Shurima is probably pretty easy because we're already at four. So we just need to play one more random Shurima to get to five Shurima. And then later on, once we get the Lux two, once we get the Jarvan two, once we get the, like all the regular two stars that we have in our board, then we'll slowly replace out the five Shurima into the regular Azir Lux board. Also, we're pretty contested this game, but that's going to be expected because on this specific patch, this comp is very contested right now. Uh, but since we already hit, we don't really need to roll down that aggressively for Lux 2. We are on level 8. Oh my goodness. How is this? Okay. <sighs> Just roll down for the 5th Shurima. And like, I'm, I'm mad because this player is like, just high rolling so hard. I just don't know how. It's not even mad, it's just jealousy, you know? It's like, I wish I had these, <laughs> this luck in my games. But again, that doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet because when you have one of these games, you have to win because there are gonna be games where none of this happens and then like you get eight. So you have to make up for those games and you have to do that right now. So now we have to think about what we can three star four costs or like whether we can do full legendary boards as we talked about in the game before. So since Azir is very contested, Azir 3 star, probably not going to happen. So what we need to do instead is maybe go for 3 star 3 cost. Maybe we get Akshan 3 with good items on him as a secondary carry, or we get a bunch of legendary units. Since we have zero Akshan items, I'm inclined to just go level 9 and get like Heimer 2 star, things like that. Scion 2 star, uh, like Cassante 2 star, Cassante belongs in the comp, and hopefully use that to win. Wow, why did we take out Teemo? Five Strategist is super powerful, so I definitely would have played the extra Teemo over the Swain. I don't know why we made that decision to take the, the Teemo out, especially since Teemo's two-star. It might have just been a mistake. I did notice that this player does click around a ton, so it might have just been an accident that they took Teemo two-star out. Now that we hit another Azir, I would just hold on to it, but I would just kind of chill at this point. Wait for all the other Azir players to die, and then roll aggressively. Maybe you still hit Azir 3 star. Worst case, if you get a ton of items, you could always just play two Azir 2s once you hit level 9. That could be done as well. Uh, so interesting items here. Not what we're looking for, because we can't really build any emblems with our spatula. So this is where like kind of the low roll part of the game exists. Obviously, I'd rather have Azir 2 star early on in the game and have like one missing item. That's definitely very preferred. But we did get our first instance of bad luck right now. So Guard Breaker on the Lux, very good item to build. That's what I would have done as well. Titan's Resolve probably could go on... Well, it's going to go on the Nasus later, but we just don't have Nasus yet. Maybe you could throw it on Akshan, uh, just to give Akshan a little more AD. And Akshan attacks pretty often, so uh, it's, it's not the worst thing to put it on. It's surely better than having the Titan's Resolve on your bench. So... Yeah, no matter what, we're like losing value by not using it. But we take a loss here, but it's fine because we're going to go level 9 while this player is probably going to die really soon. 82 gold now. Could probably wait like two more rounds before we level up because we were at like 90 some health. Uh, so just be patient and wait. We finally put Teemo in for five strategists again. And it's very curious because uh, this person clearly data checks, but did not data check to know that five strategists is really powerful and put it in really late. We also end up playing like Noxus potentially with the Scion. That could be pretty good because Scion's just a general good unit. And since we have the Noxus spat and we play Swain already, Scion's definitely like a good unit to put in later on. Uh, but Noxus, you shouldn't like change your game around it because uh, like random emblems, like you just have to take the L on a wasted item. So one player died, two Ionia emblems, unlucky. We do get the Giant Slayer, gonna be great for Lux. Another thing we could have done since we have two items on our Jarvan because we put the Titan's Resolve on him. I still think that's a mistake. I would have put it on Akshan instead. And the reason why is because you noticed it already. Lux only has two items, does not get the Radiant item. It's prioritizing Jarvan right now. And if you had two items on Lux and one item on Jarvan, you would have gotten the Radiant item on Lux. So putting the Titan's Resolve on Akshan would be pretty good. But there's a way around that. So on that last Thresh Armory thing, we could have actually taken the Redemption and then put the redemption on our Jarvan so that he has three full items, and then therefore the uh, Radiant item would default to our Lux. And the way to do that is put the Jarvan on your bench to remove the Radiant item from the Demacia buff, and then put the redemption on him, 
like the normal one and then put him back in play and then the radiant item will go on your lux so here we should look for a tank item uh, but we don't really get anything good in fact all of these are going to be so bad very unlucky right so again like the bad luck kind of catches up to you you're not going to get lucky the entire game so again whenever we do get some luck in the early game you have to really take advantage of it and we almost lost it because we could have lost our streak earlier on uh, but let's roll down get some two star legendaries probably get like lux too hopefully if some of the other players died out this is when you need to scout to see uh, how many of the azir lux players kind of died out or if they're going to die out soon because maybe you wait on rolling here probably should have picked up the ari uh, azir two star or three star isn't going to happen probably also don't want this renekton and probably should have picked up all the legendaries rolling down like the aatrox and the senna because they're definitely going to be the stuff you're going to be replacing we're facing off against an Ionia player with Ari. I love the Karma carry that this other player is using. Oh, they're actually going Invokers, so they have Loving Invocation. Never mind, their build's kind of weird. I would not just take Loving Invocation at the start of the game. I feel like that just tunnels you way too hard, but uh, we are now 33 life. Even though we are in first place, this game is getting very, very tight. There's not really anything that major that this player did to kind of put us in this position. But we do have like two wasted items that kind of made uh, all our good luck in the beginning kind of catch up to us and even out a bit. But we still should be able to top four here. So this player is thinking about putting five Shurima in because they put the Renekton in and out of their team. You only want five Shurima if you have strong Shurima units. If your Shurima units suck, definitely like don't do it, you know. Also, we skipped out on Scion. Scion 2 definitely would have been very helpful here because um, one, we have the Noxus spat, but we're not really playing around that. But... When you're, whenever you're rolling down for a bunch of legendaries, you should just two-star as many legendaries as possible because they're generally going to be better than all your trait units going into the game. All right, but in this next Thresh thing, we have Shroud of Stillness, JG, Spear of Shoujin. Probably Shroud of Stillness is going to be the pick here. All our carries have items, so we don't need... Oh, no. Uh, and then here, probably want the Protector's Vow to put it on Jarvan. It's Jarvan's best item. Ooh, nice. Cassante two-star. So I'm guessing they... Oh... So we could have Nikoed the Akshan, sold the extra Akshan that we got, and then been able to keep the Jarvan. So that's definitely a mistake there. Or you just lock your shop or wait for gold to pop out, because we just missed out on an extra copy of Jarvan. That's just a panic play. Happens to all of us, you know? Um, but if you have full items on your carry, and we technically could, could have done that, because we could have gotten a tank item for the Jarvan to uh, take the Radiant item off of him, you generally just want utility items after that. But now we want Cassante item. But... Blue buff was a very interesting pick there because blue buff Cassante two star very 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 powerful and we definitely should have tried to go for that because Cassante is going to be our late game carry right now because he's our two star tank. So whenever you have like three star three costs, remember in the Warwick game I said stuff like oh you have to itemize them. Well same thing goes for two star legendaries. You have to itemize them because the power that they give to your team is just so incredibly high um, that you just need to put whatever items you can on them. Let's say blue buff wasn't in that armory option, like even like a hand of justice on him would have been perfectly fine, you know, just like anything that can go on Cassante, you got to do. And we actually didn't top four here. No, surely one of these other players dies, right? Okay, top four, good enough. All right, so we did not cap out the game properly, even though we had a great start. That's perfectly fine. Again, whenever you get those great starts, you really have to plan the game around like securing first place because top four was already guaranteed and even though we got unlucky like yeah we still got top four right but i think like making a lot of those micro adjustments such as like getting the items for jarvan to swap the radiant onto lux itemizing cassante may or may not have changed the outcome of a lot of those games also we should have gone for two star legendaries instead of going for a zero three because it's just very difficult to hit a zero three when everyone's playing them now it's going to be time for the diamond game so this one was one of the games played by one of my irl friends we have petrocyte forest the university and ecliptic vaults he loves university because he loves prismatics he always wonders why anyone would ever vote against not a prismatic one i personally am on the opposite side i don't really like augments so i don't i don't really like the prismatic stuff because it, it makes it even more emphasized right but honestly, none of that matters. You just got to play good TFT. And we potentially have a Piltover start. Might as well hold on to it. There are some cases where it's very good, especially in this specific meta that this game was played on. You may notice I say that a lot. I say in this specific meta because metas change and this video lasts forever. So that's why I try to arm you with as much knowledge as possible so you could apply everything that you learned from this video maybe like five patches from now and it'll still be relevant, which I think is pretty cool to do. By the way, he's doing a relatively advanced optimization here whenever you have a potential upgrade in your shop you could 
not upgraded until after you see all the gold that drops. The reason behind this is you don't want too many units going into your field when you play against the neutral rounds. So then you put two copies of the pairs into the board and then buy the last thing later. So we have Challenger Crown, Cruel Pact, and Buried Treasures. Uh, I believe Cruel Pact could be pretty decent here. If I already have one two-star unit, I like taking Cruel Pact, but re-rolling it's fine as well because Buried Treasures is really good. At least on this patch. So, oh, we finally don't have a Poro player. It's an Ezreal player. So he listens to me, so I told him to play Ezreal. He's like, all right, I'll play Ezreal. But I believe he played the first two weeks of the set without even knowing that Legends existed. And he used to be like Grandmaster back in the day. But it just goes to show that even players who play a lot may not know all the stuff that's going on. But he doesn't watch my channel. Well, I'm lying. He does watch my channel, but he just plays all my videos in the background, like on his phone but doesn't pay attention to it so that I get a view, which I do appreciate, but he expects me to just tell him everything about TFT over time, which I try to do, but it doesn't happen all the time. And I guess legend slipped when I asked him like, oh, I see you're using Poro. Like, do you not like any of the other legends? He's like, you mean little legend? I'm like, no, I mean like legend. And then he threw me some insults because I didn't tell him what legends were before because he personally loves the concepts of legends being able to force the same strategy every single game that's what he likes to do so anyways we did lose this first round our board was kind of weak i would have played the oriana in the first loss even though we don't have any synergies going uh, but it obviously did not matter this fight because the other player absolutely crushed our dreams so those are two tareks there we have oriana so we could play uh, Tarek plus the oriana but we opt to go into a piltover start instead and in stage two two perfectly fine to start doing piltover at that stage you may have also noticed that we slammed the Warmogs, and that's a very good item slam because the belt's not building anything else that's that important for us, so you might as well just use up the components there. That's something all the bronze through platinum players did not actually do, so that could be another thing where you see like, oh, what's the difference between diamond players and plat players? One of them just happened just now. So we get a nice win there. I probably would pick up this Tarek pair, and yep, he does exactly that. Very nice. And in the next round, we get, hmm... Couple Ionians, so Set, Jin, nothing crazy, not enough to like pivot our board yet. I would actually lean more towards the AP route right now, so I'd actually play this Oriana, play around these two Terex, and probably build the Ionic Spark right now on one of the tanks. Ionic Sparks used in a lot of different magic builds, which are very relevant right now, and having the Terex pair plus the Oriana makes it like a lot easier to kind of use. But he opted out of that. I think he wanted to do some sort of Cannoneer game because of Piltover because that's typically what people do with Piltover. They get the T-Hex and then the Zahn comp works really well with Piltover because you run Vi, Jace, and Echo, and they all like belong in the comp anyway. So you kind of just run them with the Cannoneer and Zahn build. Uh, so that it definitely is a preferred start, but we have a lot of AP items on our bench, so it doesn't really seem like it's going to be that possible this game. So I really would have liked to see the Oriana plus the two Terex being played, or at least kept on the bench, and then building the Ionic Spark. We have four unbuilt item components, so we 100% have to finish an item here. The tier on Karma is looking mighty juicy. Spatula was good, but it got taken. And what do we end up grabbing? I'd say tier on Karma just go AP at this point. Nothing really else too much to consider. We see a set and another Jin here. And with the Karma, you could think about going into some sort of Ionia game. We have a lot of stuff on our bench now, lots of tears and lots of Negatrons. I'd probably scout to see if D-Claw is worth it in this game. Uh, but he does sell the Piltover thing, which is good because uh, he didn't really get any lose streak Piltover out there. And then I believe trying to play the Ionians right now. Definitely should level up right now. Please level up. Oh, no. Level up definitely would have been good because... Uh, we have a lot of items and like we won the last two games granted our team isn't that strong but it's it's better than nothing chalice of power double cup it ends up being built i don't really like it at all it, it just doesn't sit well with me i probably would have built maybe a d claw after scouting and i didn't see that he scouted and then if you can't build that uh, maybe just build like a blue buff or something like that instead because that could be used in like a lux comp if we went for the sorcerer route but JG Karma, probably not bad. I would have preferred the Ionic Spark again. Just a really good general early game item. Uh, but then we end up using the Reforger. But we get really lucky. We get two very good items. So there's a lot of luck involved in that. But we should have also reforged the Negatron Cloak if that was going to be the case. But I probably would have just waited until after the neutral round before reforging. But it's not the end of the world and ended up hitting. So I guess it's, it's perfectly good there. Looking like any default AP game. So... 
Kaisa, gonna be great with these items. Azir, gonna be great with these items. And then we have two great generic tank items that belong in every single build. Let's go into the neutral round. Oh my, what? Okay, I shouldn't freak out like this because I was actually in a Discord call with this player as he was playing this game, but I wasn't really paying attention because I was playing League at the time. But I'm a jungler, so I don't need to pay attention to League either. So I was like, yeah, buy the Lissandras, itemize Lissandra too, and do stuff like that. But I remember him hitting the Shen early, and it was just like, holy cow. I just forgot about it until now. But we get another Negatron. This is why you save those reforgers. Maybe we reforge like a bunch of full items. Honestly, it might not be that bad of an item if and only if it's a full AP lobby. Wait a minute, did he really pass up on this Lissandra 2 star? No way, holy cow. All right, so if you have AP items and you get like a 2 star 3 cost unit, even if it's a support unit like a Lissandra, you still should probably get it because it's just going to carry your entire stage 3. And when you sell it, it's only going to cost you 1 gold because it costs 9 gold to buy 3 Lissandras and then when you sell it, you get 8 gold. It's like very good returns. You might lose like another gold of interest or something like that. So max you lose like two gold from this, but you just get like a very solid unit. And yeah, we just throw in a random Darius for Juggernaut, I guess, for our one star Darius, one star set, instead of having like a two star Lissandra out there. It's a pretty big mistake. Now, if it was like a two star Octron, then yeah, it doesn't really make sense to buy it because you have the Jeweled Gauntlet and Guard Breaker. Don't really make as much sense on a attack damage carry, but if you get like a two-star caster and you got AP items, like you, you just have to make it, you know? Uh, so we end up losing this round, not the end of the world. Also like not buying the Lissandra isn't the end of the world either. Uh, you still have like, if you're just hard forcing a comp and you're just tunneling, you still could get to like masters doing that. All right, here it's think fast. And he asked me, it's like, do I take think fast? But I'm playing League of Legends right now. And I'm like, theoretically it's think fast, but you took too long already. So um, he levels up, rolls down. This is where you should get like Karma three-star probably. Uh, maybe a uh, Kaisa or Yasuo 2-star or a Shen 2-star. You can't get all of them because at level 6 on stage 3, you have to be like an APM god to get everything. But maybe two of those four things that I listed out are good enough. So 2-star Shen, 2-star Kaisa or like 3-star Karma or 2-star Yasuo, any two of those four is like what I would consider like a pretty good think fast. But he's rolling down here, getting pretty unlucky with the rolls honestly, but... Uh, gets a couple more karmas and also whenever you do a thing fast don't buy other units to like increase shop odds so even buying azir even though azir is great in this meta you shouldn't buy it because you just need as much time as possible to just hit everything that you want so uh, he slowed himself down maybe like five rolls by trying to like find space on his bench to sell and honestly this thing fast game not very good right we got two-star Karma, two-star Set. We pretty much got nothing. We got a Shen pair, which is okay. But you'll see that, like, even with a bad thing fast, you could still have a good game because this Augment is just, like, that good. I, I don't know. Also, like, um, this player knows how to play. He's, like, a, actually a GM in previous sets. But this set, he's still in Diamond right now. But I think he'll get to Masters, like, pretty much this weekend. Pretty much what I'm trying to say, though, is that you can still have like bad augments because technically if we waited or if we took think fast right away we could have had probably like five more rolls and then if we didn't fill up our bench that's like another five rolls so we could have probably had like 10 more rolls plus we had like 20 gold left over so we definitely could have improved like a ton from this but he's never known as an apm player he, he probably took think fast maybe like twice in his life before and yeah probably at that point if you're asking one of your friends who's coaching you like what should you take if they're not paying 100% attention, like probably just re-roll Think Fast and uh, go for something else instead. And notice, you don't always have to use it for re-roll comps. A lot of people think you have to get three stars with Think Fast, but there are a lot of times I take Think Fast even on stage four, and I just go for two star four costs. And as long as you get everything done, it's gonna be good enough to get top four a lot of the games. I think it's like probably one of the best augments, but there might not be a way to kind of nerf it. It's really difficult to balance because it's incredibly, incredibly good at like, I say GM is probably like the best rating to use Think Fast in. In Challenger, I think even though the players are better, the benefit you get out of Think Fast isn't as great. It's still incredibly good at Challenger because you just get a free top four, and that's good enough in like most people's games. But I think GM is like the peak Think Fast. You could probably average like a 3.5 or something like that because 
people aren't good enough to make like super strong boards to like beat the think fast boards and you're fast enough at that level when you're GM to like get really good think fast. But in Challenger, you might get outscaled by other people who like make better late game boards and eventually beat you out. But in Masters, it's okay. And then in Diamond and below, think fast is generally not that great because people don't know what to buy in a think fast situation because uh, there are times where you could go for other stuff, but generally you just focus on hitting one or two things and that's going to be good enough for you. Um, and obviously the higher level you are, the better at rolling you are on average. But yeah, unless you know exactly what you're doing, if you're below or diamond or below, especially if you're like golden below, just don't take think fast. You're, you got, you got to think about the basics first. You don't have time to think fast yet. Uh, but as you get better and better, then you could start practicing taking things fast and then it becomes a really good augment. I pretty much take it every time I see it because again, at like higher levels, it's pretty much just like a free top four, potentially top three. And it's even great for winning in a lot of cases because you could just use like your think fast board to go fast nine and then cap out your board with all the like two star legendaries and whatnot. But let's move on into the next neutral round. So we are at 66 health. We ended up losing a game actually, which is really bad for a think fast board. But again, since we didn't hit, it's all right. But we would probably want to level up to level seven and then roll down there. If you're in a situation like this where you uh, pretty much wasted a prismatic augment, you kind of have to already just know that you're playing for like fifth or sixth at best. I did a no augment challenge before in like one of the previous sets. And it was really hard to even like get out of gold because like not playing with augments, augments are so powerful. And whenever a prismatic game popped up, it was like pretty much impossible to play when I like purposely didn't get any value out of an augment uh, so yeah if you're playing against people of like similar skill level to you and you wasted an augment you kind of just have to pray for like a fifth or a sixth so yeah probably re-roll pandora's bench it's probably just social distancing here and then call it a day it's just a generic combat augment which uh, probably is what you should take on stage four combat augments are generally the best ones to take at this point because uh, it's pretty late in the game econ doesn't really do that much so you just need to make your team as strong as you can. So we're rolling down. What are we looking for? Karma 3-star. Maybe 6 Ionia. Oh, we already have 6 Ionia, but maybe like a Kaisa, Yasuo. Even like the 1-star versions are good enough, but uh, probably want to just slow roll at this point. It's actually really good that he rolled down to 30 gold because we do have this champion duplicator on our bench, but he got very unlucky. You normally should get like one or two copies of Karma, and if we got like even one copy of Karma when we rolled down to 30 gold, we probably would have sent it to zero just to get Karma 3-star and probably would have gotten like either Yasuo 2 or Kaisa 2 with the champion duplicator. So um, pretty unlucky roll. So remember how we were playing for a fifth or sixth before? It's definitely leaning more towards like hoping for a six now. But remember the previous game we looked at where someone got an Azir 2-star for free and then they ended up getting like barely a fourth? Just because you got lucky in the first part of the game doesn't mean you're not going to get unlucky in the second half and just because you got unlucky in the first part of the game doesn't mean that you can't get lucky in the later part um, because we could just hit the karma three for free like even next shop we could just roll once and have three karma karmas in the shop it definitely could happen but we get a kaisa here perfect item for her notice how this player is really great at like slamming a lot of items i know we got lucky in the uh, item reforger at the start of the game but like ever since then, like building the correct items every time and pretty much wasting like not that much value from the team. So pretty good there. Well, I guess he could have built the Jeweled Gauntlet a bit earlier, but there just wasn't really an item holder for that. You could technically put it on Jin because most times you sell Jin later on. But this Karma's doing abs... Is that an Aatrox 2-star? Oh my god. Hedge Fund, Level Up, Recombobulator. Is that the best Augment combo in the game? Because you just get like triple Econ, but like... Even that, that's the problem with taking triple econ augments. You lose to a highly mediocre Karma 2 carry board. So here we probably want Kaisa items. Obviously Shen is two starred, so we want to put all the tank items on our Shen, but we don't need to get new tank items because we could just sell the set. So just get this glove or tier, both of them work. Maybe the glove because it's five gold, uh, but tier is also perfectly fine. There's not too much of a difference there. Glove's really good because we already have a jeweled gauntlet. So if we ever get like a hand of justice or guard breaker, we get a lot of additional critical strike. Uh, oh, we missed a karma. It's okay. That's just going too fast, you know. Ari's pretty good. We could replace the Jin with that. Where is this Yasuo, man? Like, holy cow. Oh, a mistake that people might make is maybe building a Yasuo item or going for a Yasuo item on Carousel with the logic of like, oh, that normally belongs in Ionia comps, right? Uh, wrong. Because 
We don't even have a single copy of Yasuo, let alone even close to two-star Yasuo. So there's no reason to kind of like go for those items. But uh, we're in a decent spot here. Ari goes in for Jin, but unlucky that we missed that extra karma. He was just rolling too quickly, and sometimes it happens, but uh, I wouldn't really harp too much on that. Everyone makes mistakes like that. Even like the top players in the world, you see them fumble roll downs all the time, and it's just bound to happen. Don't like make fun of players because they do that, because I'm willing to bet that you have made that mistake before as well. Uh, but let's go on into the next round. Taking some losses here, but I think we are actually like, yeah, we're at least top five already. That's good enough. That's the power of think fast. Even when it sucks, you can still get top five. And it's all because ThinkFast is really good at saving HP because we won maybe like two rounds that like we probably shouldn't have. Then the augment gets outscaled maybe in like stage five and we just aren't there yet. This just happens to be one of those games where people are dying really, really early. But uh, we definitely could maybe even top three this, like probably top four. Um, the, way the, the, the reason why the lobby is like this is because the first place guy is at like infinite HP. So everyone else had to be like taking fat L's instead. But we definitely do lose this round. We went one and four in stage four. Wow, and we're still alive. It's actually unironically just like a top four. Holy cow. Moving in into the next neutral round though, we have uh, pretty much nothing in our shop. We just have to roll down, pray for karma three. You know what'd be a really interesting play? It's if we Nikoed for Kaisa two star on our bench. It's very interesting because we didn't really have Kaisa items before. We still don't have any. So we only had one item on her. So the upgrade actually isn't that big. So maybe it is better to hold off on like fast Nikoing the Kaisa two star and save it for karma instead. We are actually getting punished by having near zero karmas. By the way, playing around three cost carries, this is probably like a textbook game of like how effective it is or why it works because uh, a lot of people think that you could only go for four cost carries and that you need four cost carries in stage four, but that's just simply not true. As if you can stabilize with something like Karma two star or maybe like Kalista two star, Akshan two star, typically in stage four, that's gonna be enough to get you top fours, maybe even top threes. And then eventually in stage five, when you have more gold or if you're level eight, then you could go for your Kaisa two stars, your Azir two stars and things like that. Obviously, some players get super lucky and they just hit everything at level 7 in stage 4. And that's going to happen. It's TFT, right? But remember, they don't always get those games, but you also get those games sometimes too. So the games that you do get the Azir 2 stars for free, you really have to take advantage of them. But you also have to know what to do when that doesn't happen. And this game is a perfect example of it where we just played around Karma 2 star the entire game. Depression actually hits because we now have to sell the extra Karmas because we're on our last life and hope that we just hit an RE 2 star or Yasuo 2 star and then just champion duplicator it. Let's move on into the next round. We're facing someone with hedge fund. I think it's like trade something and then like money, money, money. Balance budget is what it's called. And wow, triple econ augment. But I think we actually can win this round because triple econ augment's really weak because you just don't have any power on your team. Then again, we have Think Fast, which is an econ augment. Buried Treasures is like half and half. Okay, never mind. We just lose. But overall, like, honestly, not a bad game for like having a pretty weak board. And this is, again, a great example of why three cost carries are so powerful. And if stuff hits the fan, you're not always out of the game quite yet because it's probably happening worse for other players if you are theoretically better than them over the long run. But thanks so much for all watching this video. Hopefully you learned something about how to get from unranked all the way to diamond in each of these games. And if again, if you want to be part of these compilations, fill out the form in the comment or the description. And hopefully you all learn from this and leave a timestamp whenever you make a comment. And I'll see you all in my next video.